Okay, we are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Ramblings. Finally back. It's been uh, it's been on a hi hiatus, and uh, I won't go, in go into any details about why that is, nor will I make any promises for more regular content in the future, because that's not a promise I think I can hold. But um, <laughs> let's just enjoy this uh, this evening, shall we, in instead, and uh, see what where that will bring us. And, works for me. <laughs> yeah, and on that endeavor, I have two new wonderful guests with me this evening. Uh, both first timers on the show. We have um, the notorious meme lord of the Ninth Age, uh, the podcast Whoa. extraordinaire. Uh, it's Mick TikTok of the Scottish Wildlings. How are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me, man. My pleasure. pleasure to be here. Um, don't speak too soon. I think you introduced me as a, a special guest, but maybe by the end I will be infamous or, <laughs> or dreaded, you know, and receive a ban for all other Swedish content. So. <laughs> I don't know how much other there is to compete with. But <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but you, you've been making the rounds a, a bit about uh, on the different podcasts, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm on my tour currently, um, yeah. just sharing some insights. Um, yeah, I'm in high demand, you know. Yeah. But you're a lucky one. I give you, I give you this for free, my friend. So. <laughs> okay. I, f I feel honored. I feel honored. <laughs> uh, and you're of course uh, an, uh, a very common guest on the uh, uh, Madigate Radio. I am the yet to be confirmed third host, but <laughs> I've not got the paycheck through. But yes, um... <laughs> holding off on that title. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, it's excellent to have you with uh, with me tonight. Oh, thanks, man. And we're also joined tonight from uh, sunny Pen Pennsylvania, USA. Mm -hmm. The legend of the moderation team, the Terminator himself. It's that. Wow. That's a, quite an introduction. Hey, thanks for finally having me here. Yeah. Uh, I, conversely, uh, have, do not work for free, so I'll be sending you a bill at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Great to finally be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's... Um, Good that we finally were able to put this one together. Um, super happy to to do that because it's a topic that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's another uh, faction focus episode. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Empire of Sonstal tonight, which is uh, another faction that I do collect and play a little bit at least. So that's always exciting. And we will be looking into the background, the rules, and the miniatures for this awesome army of the Ninth Age. But before we do that, we should shine the hobby spotlight and see what we are we are working on tonight, gentlemen. Why don't you start, uh, Michael? So I am going to be jumping between a couple of different things. So on the one hand, I'm finishing off... Um, tidying up some militia. So nice. these are like Oathmark human warriors from um, North Star. Um, highly recommended. And then I'm also working on some knights. So I'm again finishing up some like horses details. Yeah. Um, is that Warlord? This is Perry. Perry. Um, but the knights are actually foundry miniatures. Mm -hmm. Which I think were also sculpted by the Perry, so <laughs> I'll be jumping between those two tonight. Um, yeah. Nice. So expanding that Empire army, great. Pretty much, yeah. Dan? Yeah, well, lately I've been painting a lot of Vermin Swarm, actually, but it felt inappropriate to do that during this chat. So mm -hmm. I broke out some of my own Perry miniatures. I'm painting some uh, Ham Weapon Shield Imperial Guard at the moment. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Very, very shiny they look. Yeah, they will be. Uh, how did you? Is it the uh, airbrush for the the base color, or have you painted that? No, it's just a, it's just an aerosol spray. Okay, cool. just for uh... with a silver, silver color. Nice. All right, uh, and th they will be Imperial Guard, I guess. That's correct. Yeah. I need to get myself some some of those, which hand open and shield. I think that seems like a pretty good option. Yeah. 
All right, for myself, uh, I'm also working on Empire Stormstyle. It's not often that I manage to sync up my paint schedule with <laughs> uh, my uh, video schedule, but um, this time it happened. I'm working on a little Inquisitor. This guy, and oh, little, cool. little is the word, because this is a, is a halfling. From TT Combat, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, the good eye. Nice. Um, it's a really, yeah, they... really cute little miniature. Yeah, they have such lovely halfling miniatures. Yeah, they have a whole range, and a lot of it fits very well into Emperor Sonnenstall army, I think. And I've been looking for ways, uh, like, people who follow my army know that they have a very diverse army, lots of different species in it. Mm -hmm. I've been looking for ways to include, expand that to my characters as well, because it kind of feels odd to have a military leader that's a different species than human. I know it, it, it. It's. I've been thinking about it, this and why I, I, I struggle with that because it, it feels like then the only thing special about that model is that it's a different species. You can't see that it's a character because it's just a different species. But when I go to the more special characters, like an Inquisitor, then his look is so unique that you immediately see him as an Inquisitor and a Halfling. He's both of them, those things. It's not just a different species. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been looking for ways to include different species in my character selection. This is the first one. Nice. I'm excited to paint him up. And we're also excited to hear about what the audience is painting. So if you're watching live now, please put it into the chat. And uh, if you're watching it later, then put it in the comments. Always good to read those. Um, and with that, I think we shall <coughs> move on to the news instead. Um, and I'm gonna uh, look over here. We're gonna start with the general night age uh, news. And um, since this, it's been a while since the last show. There's of course a ton of news that we could pick from. Um, I made a fairly sh small selection of some bits and pieces that I think are in interesting and big and important. So let's start with the vermin swarm. Uh, since last time they've gotten a whole brand new uh, army book, um, but they got an, a fourth alpha yesterday or something mm -hmm. recently. So we can focus on that one perhaps. Have you seen it? Um, I have had the briefest of glances. So as I mentioned before the show, so if anyone's watching it and didn't hear this, um, I was hoping to play um, Vermin Swarm at an event two weeks ago. But unfortunately, the player wasn't able to come. So I need to preface any opinion <laughs> or hot take by saying I've not played against the new book or any iteration of the new book. Um, That's so true yeah. for me as well. So don't, don't, I don't want anyone shouting at me or sending me PMs like, you're bang out of order, son. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm saying now, I've not played it, okay? Not played against the book. So with that said, what's your opinion on, on it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of funny because I find myself in an odd situation. I think if I were just starting out on Ninth Age, I think I would be really, like, interested in playing vermin swarm and don't get me wrong i have been interested in playing because when we get on to the empire discussion um the way i play empire is buckets of dudes or my preferred way of playing is just buckets of dudes and i look at vermin swarm as okay there's quite a lot of a lot of crap <laughs> right yeah <laughs> but then that's where my issue sometimes comes in from what i see it's like i i can't help but wonder like um it's not crap enough some of it um, but again, that has, there has to be like a lot of asterisks after that, because when you read people playing it, or people I know speaking about playing it, or um, having taken the time to actually play the book, they say that their win rate is pretty bad. So it's not looking like it's super OP, right? Which is what everyone decries it as being. And But yeah. at the same time, I think there are some things which are potentially problematic and I mean, in particular, for example, looking at the latest iteration, 
So again, this just came out this week. Comparing it to like version three, um, there's a couple of changes I was looking at, and I just didn't really understand um, understand those. Um, I don't know if yeah. Dan wants to chime in before I I do a, a deep deep shit take. You know. Yeah, we, yeah, we, well, we can do top top down top level first. So go Dan. Uh, I, I'm a long time Swarm player, actually. I, as I said, I haven't played uh, competitively in close to a year now. Uh, I'm also on the game design team, fresh recruit there, so I'll be very careful in how I word this. But <laughs> I, 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 I think what they're striving to do in that the book made a lot of bold choices. It's not your traditional, not even your traditional comparing it to the slim book but it's really not like anything else in the game uh so i really think that they swung for the fences with this one as a result though what requires a lot of time to balance because it, there's just nothing to compare it to and i think michael just touched on it where on paper you see a lot of things that superficially look wrong or very powerful or because because we are contextualizing them within an army we know but because it doesn't play that way uh, and because it has really steep learning curve because no one has played anything quite like it it, you have just the opposite happening on the ground so to speak where no one seems to be uh, consistently winning a lot with them so i think there's there's a a learning curve it's going to take some time to figure it out both for people playing against it and playing with it and then to balance it by extension do you think uh, the the life is cheap rule is a big part of that with the, uh, the halved combat resolution for killing rats. Yeah, I, I, for me personally, I think that's one of the coolest changes they made with yeah. the book. And again, when you look at it on paper as an opponent, you say, well, that's ridiculous. That's way too powerful. But then when you actually play against it, because it's something that no one has played against uh, or with months ago when the book dropped, um, it's the kind of thing where as of yet, I don't, I don't think anyone's really cracked the code on if it is abusable, how to abuse it? Yeah, that that that's the impression I got gotten as well. The uh, as you say, it, it is uh, like the, the horde aspect of the of the army. Not only like the big units, but also with uh, taking be like somewhat big units of war machine like types, like three three or four uh, um, rotary guns or canister launchers like small catapults in a in a unit that's so unique so it's um it's a, it's a special thing for sure uh for myself i uh, i i'm a, a bit in, in michael's boat i think um i uh, because personally i i'm coming from this as a new night age player to this army because i, I started collecting this army very recently and to me this this book looks super exciting it's so unique and it's so uh, characterful i love the the roman theme of it uh, i know a lot of people are a bit torn on that uh, to say the least but uh, for me it's a it's a slam dunk um so I'm, I'm super excited to start painting and playing this army so uh want to go into some more details sure We'll not um go too deep but uh, some some hot take oh for sure for sure um i mean i also need to say i should have said this at the beginning i'm a total idiot right so <laughs> i'm having a bit of an alex jones you know when he's on joe rogan moment but i mean i i don't know what i'm talking about right <laughs> so i'm not going to come on here like insert staff member here of your choice or non-staff member we'll say to keep it <laughs> Uh, you, you immediately regret having me on, don't you? No, I'm only kidding. I'm only joking. This is um, great entertainment. I'm so <laughs> But it's... Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So I don't know what I'm talking about, but... And I will admit that I don't know what I'm talking about, right? I have no set in stone opinions about really anything, right? Um, other than that I'm an idiot. I know that, right? That's that's constant. Um, I think the issue I have... Or the issues I have are really kind of symptomatic of like, I think the lab process and what the new lab process is, and you kind of see the symptoms of that in like each new lab, right? Which is a whole discussion on its own. So I'm not going to jump into that, right? 
Um, but for example, I look at a couple of things like, um, I, yeah, I don't want to jump into that, right? So I need to be specific. MADA <laughs> has given me a brief that I need to stay within, right? <laughs> so it's like, I can't help but wonder if there's a game to be played between some of, I don't know, like, like when you're designing a lab and then you know that it's going to be nerfed. Now, why do you know it's going to be nerfed, right? Because you're releasing it as like an alpha. And you know that people are, people on the forum are like keyboard warriors, you know, like they haven't even read the full book and they're like, well, actually that's, that's very overpowered and that's so bad for the game. You know what I mean? Like they don't know what they're talking about. They've not played it, right? They, they don't see it in context, right? Yeah. But knowledgeable of that, I can't help but wonder, like I look at a lot of things in the book and it's like, it seems to be overshooting the mark. And that I kind of wonder if there's an anticipation, like, give a lot of stuff a lot of things and then by the end of this alpha process beta process gamma process you kind of have what you want at the end so yeah. for example for example um i what i was looking at what are they i think it's blood fur veterans is that what they're called yeah the elite more, more elite uh, the more elite core, guys core unit. and so they have this this um tetsudo phalanx mechanic yeah which I think in the previous iteration was quite cool because it had like a drawback, right? It was kind of cool where it's like, look, um, if you're in Tetsudo, your charges are minimized. So, you know, this represents the guys being clustered quite closely together. So they're a bit uh, less maneuverable than they would be if they were spread out, let's say. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you're in Phalanx and you, you then get a... Uh, I think it's like maximized for fleeing or something. It's like the opposite effect. But yeah. the bad thing is like when whenever you flee, which as we've seen like Vermin Swarm guys do, you're, that impacts there. So there's a drawback. But I look at the current version and these aren't there anymore. It's just a straight buff, which I find very confusing because it's like if you look at the background reasoning for it, it's meant to be that these guys are a poor imitation of the culture they're following. So I yeah. don't understand why it's gone from being a catch-22 to just, you know, a straight buff. And again, yeah. I can't help but wonder if that taps into my somewhat pessimistic view of how the, the lab process is going, where it's like, we'll give it all a lot of good stuff. And then as it, as the process goes along, you know, we anticipate losing stuff. But if we're putting a lot of stuff there, we're going to keep what we originally wanted. I, Maybe that I, makes no sense. I, I, hope I, it does. I think there's there's some tru truth that uh, with regards to complexity, because I think they are putting more complexity in than what is really necessary to start with, because it's easier to to simplify, I think, than to increase. Complexity. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, so I, I I think this is a pattern that we're seeing. Like they 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 did sort of the opposite with the. Um, Warriors of the Dark, Dark Gods book, which was pretty pretty plain actually when it came, first came out. But sure. They, they worked to put more cool stuff in with the favors and stuff like that on core units, and I think that's that that, that they they learned from that experience, I guess. For sure, because I mean, since then as well, the lab process has changed. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I that's... mean, since like demons, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But as I say, I'm kind of I don't know like. Maybe you should have me on another time if I don't completely ruin this. <laughs> no, no <laughs> to, the views are sharing. My... <laughs> <laughs> to share my wider skepticism um, of like, again, it's not about the book, so I'm sorry for like being a bit tangential at the moment. But, yeah, but it's, I don't it's know. An interesting discussion. It can it could definitely warrant, warrant an episode. I think I've talked about the process before on the show, but it, as it has been updated, it's yeah, it's an it's a good topic. I, I'll I'll make a note of that actually. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to Dan. Do you have any uh, more deeper thoughts? About no, I'll it? just say briefly, just because I'm here to talk about Empire. I don't know about you boys, but yeah, I'll say briefly that uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier, part of what we are experiencing uh, in terms of our sort of this book is that it's just not like any other book that we've seen. Uh, having now seen all of the internal threads, all of the internal discussions in the book, I won't say anything specific about those, but I see the game design team working on it and all of the threads. 
there is no conscious effort to make the book too powerful. It, it really is now, now the book's been released and it's an alpha, kind of a yo-yo effect of, of trying to increase power, decrease power, trying because the goal ultimately is to get it as close to central as possible. Uh, but as I just said, because the book is so unusual in a lot of the mechanics, a lot of the stat lines, a lot of the special rules, it's just especially hard to do. So I would just encourage in any other alpha release, perhaps, uh, uh, patience, I guess, with as they're trying to figure out what is right uh, and what's wrong. Yep. What would you say if you didn't have your staff tag on? <laughs> what would I say if I didn't have my staff <laughs> tag on? <laughs> no, I... Uh, it's funny you say that because I joined the game design team after the alpha was released. So I'm in a kind of a weird position where I had a lot of very strong opinions about a lot of the sweeping changes that were made. And they're still in the early versions of those threads. Uh, and so I even went into these old threads where I saw all of these discussions with a vengeance because I thought, you know what, I'm going to be able to see these guys were making real bad decisions and they were up to no good. And it's not there. I mean, I see a group of guys that were trying to make these sweeping changes to make the book from anything else that's been done other than this horde bubble army everybody stays within 12 inches of the general and the bsp they were really trying to do something different kind of sounds like empire doesn't it <laughs> it's an interesting segue yeah hey hang on we're not we're not there yet <laughs> Sorry, okay. we still have lots of, new, lots of news to cover but we'll, we'll this try is to my show now <laughs> no, I we'll I try to cycle through it a, a bit faster I, I i want to drop one final comment on the the worm swarm book and that's um the ruinous di dictator like I, I i i started collecting this army a bit and i that, that started before the, uh, uh, the the new army book was released uh so I've, I've been looking at the different units and what i ha want to have and i did look at the vermin demon and, and thought, okay, I want a vermin demon someday. So I started looking at options for that and found some some cool ones. And I even bought one from Mantic. Oh, nice. But now that I see that uh, the, the vermin's uh, di dictator rules, I want to buy at least two more. <laughs> I, I mean, you can have nine nine different permutations, but I, I think I w want to have one variant for each of the mor mortal audience at least. So, yeah, I'm gonna make some purchases. That's for sure. Okay. I hope, I hope Santa's listening. <laughs> Santa is always listening. <laughs> He's my biggest fan. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on to on to the Kingdom Kingdom of Equitain background supplement that was released. Uh, this is the second background supplement of this kind that's been re 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 released for an upcoming uh, army. So the first was uh, Red Elves, and this one is for Equitain. And it's a nice little supplement. Um, it gives pretty in-depth uh, view, I think, of the faction. And unlike the uh, um, Dread Elf one, uh, we already have quite a bit of information about uh, the King of Equitaine, so this ties into that a lot, uh, making it a, a bit deeper uh, all in all, which I like. So um, yeah, overall a, a, a plus rating for me. Have you seen it, Annie? I'll let Dan start this thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll preface the whole discussion on background uh, with the fact that I, uh, well, since Michael's looking for a hot take from me, uh, even sad, <laughs> I struggle with the narrative format uh, yeah. that all of the background is presented in. I, I really enjoy... Uh, and maybe it's because I'm a, an accountant by trade, so I just think this way. I'd prefer a, sort of a textbook to read, uh, just because the information is much easier to present. And then to color the background with letters and things like that to just sort of expand on the raw information being presented. So I'll just say that. Yeah, please. it's uh, the, so. So, it, um, but I really did enjoy, especially the parts of the. Stuff, and I guess ironically that uh, sort of read that way, like the very opening page. It, is supposed to be a plaque for a painting. And so it was sort of this tongue-in-cheek uh, description of this supposed painting and the plaque that's beneath it in a museum. So yeah. it wasn't presented in a letter format, which was a refreshing change. And it was very mm -hmm. funny. And the information that was been presented was cool. Uh, I even liked that it, uh, it made mention of, like you would see in a traditional historical painting, saying like, the artist took some liberties here by saying, saying that the Green Knight was present. 
yeah. uh, as though yeah, it, it that know. was the the historical piece, right? Uh, of uh, like the founding exactly. of of the, of, of the the nation, and it I, I think it did a great job with like balancing that, uh, like explicitly telling the reader that this is not yeah. entirely re- reliable, uh, and, right. and there are some conflict, conflicting uh, ideas here. I, I I like it when they uh, when they do that. But I, I think that's like toying with that part of the uh, the um, narration aspect they have, I think is good. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. That, I... that that was a good piece. I like the there's another piece a little further on that was on heraldry. It was talking about the breakdown of heraldry. I found that very yeah. informative too. It's just it's good. It's well rounded. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um. I pretty much have to um, second Dan. So apologies, <laughs> viewer, for the lack of diversity on this panel. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's an interesting point, right? I mean, it's, it's ultimately about taste. Okay, so it's it's like if that's your predominant medium for presenting the fluff, then it's kind of like the Roman theme before. You either really love it or you don't. Yeah. Um, which is not a slate, right? It's, again, it's a matter of taste. Yeah. Um, but it's quite interesting when you read the wiki, which does provide a summary of of the setting. Um, I mean that more for like Empire, which I guess we'll come to. Um, yeah. Because it's interesting because when it's presented like that, a lot of the flavor is completely stripped away. And it does actually read perhaps quite confusingly similar to something else. But we can get to that. Um, but what I will say, if this is your cup of tea, right, if you like this stuff, then there's like 40 pages, I believe. Mm. So get yourself a beverage of your choice, a wee chocolate biscuit or cookie, if you're American. And, you know, just the hammer that stuff, man. Agreed. So, uh, and I'll say say that it is my cup of tea. I, I, I've really been enjoying this uh unreliable narrator format overall. Great. Uh, I'm uh, noticing we have a comment in the chat. So uh, hello to Idum from the forum. Oh, hey, man. Uh, good to have you on board. Uh, on the background supplement as well, uh, I um, also with this uh, touching on to existing stories, stories already, that's always something that I, I like when they do. And the character section that they had with some famous character, uh, they did mm-hmm. quite a lot with the uh, Minister of War, uh, Tanya Ferret. Uh, she's been mentioned before, um, which is a female female knight too, which I think is cool. Oh, wow. Um, and there were a few others that that have been mentioned before. Gen- General General Fontaine, of course, the uh, renegade general in Avras and stuff like that. So it was neat, some neat things. And and those kinds of chapters also gave g- good opportunities for theming your armies armies around. I think, like you can imagine yourself including Tanya Harrod, Ferret in your army, perhaps as a char- character. So I like that. Anyway, uh, the links are in the description, so if you want to check it, check it out, go and do so. We... Please like and subscribe, <laughs> and <laughs> or sorry, I should say, like smash that like button <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. yeah, do that too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we shall move on to more Kingdom of Equitain because there's been a lot of Kingdom of Equitain. Um, there's, there's a big thread with spoilers. Um, I haven't looked too much into this, but I saw that they're, they've been revealing a few units, like a Heraldic Beast, which is a, another flying uh, mount option, which I found a bit in- interesting. Very long charge range, I think, 10-14 uh, once mo- uh, March, so that's curious. I also heard that their favorite food is cheese. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> that's a good spoiler. Um, and then also the, a fake courtier, uh, which was like some sort of beast like uh, warrior that I don't I don't know what you see. It's interesting because yeah. it almost read to me like a, uh, a forest spirit green knight or something like that because she can be really 
brutal. I don't know if you saw the upgrades. There's the one that's just a wizard of death, which is yeah. cool. Uh, but she can also to fly at 918 and the vorpal sword she can take adds three attacks and gives her if you roll a six to wound multiple wounds d3 which yeah attacks, <laughs> flying 18 right 918 i think lethal strike baked in even if you don't roll a six anyway yeah she's yeah I, it, it, it also gives you a plus two armor i believe Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so she has to be arm, yeah. arm two, and then uh, five of pages. I, I sort of imagine like some beast, like knight dude, big knight sort of. But I, I, I don't really know. It's, um, I'm curious at least. So that's good. Um, so that nobody thinks I'm like a fluff basher, which is not. Um, <laughs> what's the word? What's the word? Um, it's not a, a euphemism for beating up rodents like ra rabbits <laughs> so if rabbits have been beaten in your area um this is not me okay um i actually really digged the like the kind of prelude from this, the, the teaser which was given which was this idea of i mean it's kind of like the green knight i guess but it's i like how there's a bit more kind of leeway with it where um you know you have this kind of like spirit imbued in this you know somewhat fantastical and awesome natural form and i think we've seen some art as like a big stag or something or i can't really remember maybe i'm talking bollocks sorry this is a family show so um whoa we'd like to apologize for our our friend here um but i really like that i really like i also like i like the modeling opportunities but i like that it's not vague Right, yeah. I like the, the description there. So this is an invitation to go and check the spoiler thread, right? Yeah, I but think the, 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 the Heraldic Beast was really open in, in like in interpretation because yeah. I, I think they're intentionally doing it like this can be any type of animal that you see on sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I was looking at it and I was I was messaging some friends. I was like, well, what, what actually is this? Like, I want to know what, you know. I mean, they give you a base size, but I don't want to be having like a tiny bunny with green stuffed wings. And it's like, that's my... 10 inch charge <laughs> massive guy you know um but yeah i like i like that it's kind of solid enough of a feel for what the, what the unit should be but also gives you quite nice like modeling opportunities um yeah and i think they even said like what minis are you going to use so i'm keen to see what what people do for sure all right um there's a competition coming up for oh, yes. Equ Equitain, uh, heraldic competition. Last day to enter is the f 15th of, of October. So uh, a few more days. And you, you, you can enter a heraldic design of your own, uh, either as a painted miniature or as a drawing or whatever. And you can win some really neat pri prizes, actually. There's a painted damsel, that's the top prize, a really, really well painted damsel and uh, other mini minutes that you can win for second and third prize as well so if yeah you... everybody should join in on that because the just the prize support alone is all i think contributed by ludeman on the forums who yeah. is a fellow american and he has a really extensive collection especially of kingdom of Ecotain models but he's got some incredible pieces yeah very, very cool of him to open up his collection like that yeah for sure um I've um, I've considered entering. I don't know have any design at the moment. Uh, I, I'm afraid, but I do have like a small Equitain army. So yeah, I, I look into it for cool. sure. Can uh, you tease any like symbols that you're playing about with? Uh, I like, a biscuit. I, <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, let's go with that. Let's go with that. I mean, what what type of biscuit, Dan? <laughs> Gotta be precise here. I think a chocolate one was alluded to earlier, so. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's enough of the uh, Equitain spoilers, I think. Uh, we can move on to some miniatures. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you um, so that you two can follow along. Well, let's full size this. And oh, whoa. Clear. So uh, this is the. Uh, first miniature that I want to share. Uh, there's been tons and tons and tons of miniature releases in the last time, so just uh, go out and find cool minis for your own. Uh, I'm just going to pick a few highlights here. Uh, so this is a goblin boss from Avatars of War, a printable mini. 
And I think this is one of the most unique sculpts I've ever seen. Yeah, like, I've, I've been following um, all the characters in this series from Avatars of War. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of... Yeah. I'm trying very hard to not buy them. <laughs> It's... That's really cool. So the flail at the top, is that all one sculpted piece or are those different options for like the position you could choose? I, I, I think that's one piece. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's my impression too. And it's like, I've never seen anything do, like that before. It's, it's crazy. Like sculpting movement that way. It's, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so cartoony and it's so appropriate. I can't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't understand why no one has done this before. Uh, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, and they have a, a whole range, as as uh, Michael said. Uh, of, uh, yeah, they have a whole range characters. of individual characters, but also um, some chariots, which are really cool. Yeah. So you have like a goblin king on a chariot. Um, if you if you think of like a, a reimagining of um, the Warhammer or Total War Warhammer character, um, what's his name? The Grom the Paunch. Grom Punch. the Paunch. That's him. Um, total reimagining of him, but it's it's a really stellar miniature with even different options for the wolves. So definitely check that out. You've also got a vanilla goblin chariot, um, and even multi-part STL uh, goblin wolf riders. Yeah, which is really cool because I think that in particular, as well as the chariots, are options in the orcs and goblin book which don't really have a lot of kind of obvious choices. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. That's very true. So are those just STL files, or can you purchase them like traditional miniatures as well? You can't purchase them via Avatars of War, um, but I do know that there are some there are some companies that are that have a license, I believe, to print these for you. Mm. Uh, one of them is Weird Farm Miniatures, who I believe is on the forum. Yeah. Um, they're they're based in Denmark. Um, and again, yeah, I think there's quite a few others, but. Um, I'd actually be interested, if anybody's watching who's ordered from Weird Farm Miniatures, uh, can you let us know what they're like? Because, again, I'm asking for a friend. This is not... I've got all the minis I need. <laughs> I don't need any more minis. <laughs> but for, for my friend's Christmas, I want to know how good they are. Understandable. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on. Uh, we have a steam tank, appropriate for the show, uh, from uh, Norba Miniatures. Uh, do I think this? No, this one is still in stock. They they have a few different variants, but this particular one is still in stock. Um, so not terribly imaginative. It's uh, a similar design, but uh, still cool. And uh, the, the platform is yeah. cool. Yeah, I love the originality of it. Yeah. It's cool to have access to that model too, <laughs> because the uh, the alternative is to spend hundreds of dollars on the original Games Workshop model. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's... Dan, Dan, you're totally wrong, my friend. Right? Well, I'm sorry. No, no, no. But this is actually a really great point. Um, you can actually find online. I think it's on the Empire Forum. So the old, sorry, I know we're talking about Ninth Age, but the old Empire Forum. Somebody made a print out a template that you would put over like plastic card or balsa wood. And you can then carve yourself a similar looking frame, um, yes. which fits on top of even like the plastic Games Workshop Steam Tank or another Steam Tank of your choosing from another uh, miniature manufacturer. Um, and it's really cool. The guy has shown like step by step how he's done it, what he painted it up to be like. It's really, really sweet. And even though I already have three Steam Tanks because <laughs> I have an undiagnosed problem, I would really very much like to to get that a similar model because I think it's so cool. I think it's so lovely. Yeah. I I can agree. All right. Uh moving on to Mantic. They have released or expanded oh. their Salamanders army. Talk about going from a 6 to a 10, Mantic. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Beautiful. They have like a monstrous infantry of uh, Tyrants, so some sort of lizard stuff, and elementals, flying uh, phoenix rock things with lizards on top. Yeah, uh, absolutely stunning. Yeah. It reminds me though, like you just hinted at it. That do you guys see the old Sherlock, not old old Sherlock Holmes, the original Johnny Depp Sherlock, not Johnny Depp, good lord, 
uh, Robert Downey Jr., Sherlock Holmes, and the scene where he is boxing the guy and he's, you know, just slapping at him and then all of a sudden knocks him out. And somebody says, like, where did that come from? I think it's at the end of this. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel with this. Where it's like, have, have you guys been capable of doing this all along? Or has something changed recently? Is this a simulation to test? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Because also, also not here, because it's not yet available, is the Mantic, the new Mantic Halflings, which are yeah, coming out. Yeah, th that's the ne 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 mm -hmm. next, uh, ne next slide. Will, will, will you oh, sorry, those? sorry. I'm just so excited. Sorry. Yeah, yeah these, these are amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. It's yeah, it's you got only... dogs. You've got small people. You, you got this thing, th this thing. Like, <laughs> it's so amazing. It's a robot pig, and it's a chef on top. So yeah. imagine eating there. I wonder what the reviews are on TripAdvisor. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it's um, but it's really amazing. It's really just. Yeah. And also, it also shows you as well. I mean, you could even say the same for the older Mantic stuff, which I actually quite like. I have a weird thing where I don't like perfect miniatures. I like miniatures with like imperfections. Maybe that's what I say so people think my miniatures look better. But, um, <laughs> but it's amazing as well. Like this, I like it this way. Yeah, this this just goes to show what like a good paint job can do as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of just like really bringing out miniatures but these are fab like i know a lot of people are very excited i think actually mad at there's another miniature in particular it's like a lawnmower kind of thing uh let's see here or maybe that's uh the, the orc... yeah it's in the army set yeah, yeah there you go this guy <laughs> <laughs> i think that'd be like a great scrap wagon or something yep <laughs> yeah yeah for sure it's <laughs> A lot of go a lot of gold in this uh, this release. Yeah, I think. absolutely. But no, well done, Mantic. Absolutely phenomenal. Yep. Uh, and I think that's about done. It does it for news. Uh, unless we want to keep uh, drooling over Mantic. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've really been upping their game lately. That's uh, it's cool to see. Uh, the, like the Ratman army releases from uh, a few months ago. Um, I've been getting some of those miniatures and they are nice. What are they like to put together? I do not know. Ah. <laughs> I'm waiting with, with doing that. Stick uh, it on the later base. So, but the, the, the spruce, spruce look uh, really, really, really nice. Yeah, because I got some of the new goblins. Yeah. Which, similar to you, I've yet to start. And or will appear on my eBay store, so check that out um, <laughs> <laughs> if you want some discount <laughs> goblins. Uh, but yeah, like you've got even just for bits in terms of options. Um, again, that's what I kind of love about these more old school like multi part models. You just you can take it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And the mantic, the new mantic sprues are just so generous with what you get and yeah. so diverse. That's um, that's a really good point because it's so interesting to see how. Like Mantic and uh, Shield Wolf Miniatures and a few other companies, companies they're like following in the footsteps of Games Workshop, really. With yeah. now, now they are in the the the, high, the perfect heydays of the multi-part plastic kits, <laughs> which is my favorite era because Games Workshop has moved moved over to multi like single part mono Singles, yeah. kit that are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But you don't get the options, and I like the yeah. options. So yeah, I, I I'm. I'm loving this era, era. That's for sure. All right. How about we move on to the main topic of the show? Play can, fanfare. Can we do that? Let's see. Uh, it's, we shall go back to, to this slide and stop presenting and see if we can get this one to operate. Let's combobulate. Okay, there we go. Uh, back to the normal layout. So, uh, Empire of Sonstal is the topic for tonight. Um, shall we start with like our own relations to it? How wh wh what makes us experts in this uh, topic? Uh, Dan, you want to go first? I was hoping you could tell me. I don't know why. I don't <laughs> <laughs> you have a beautiful Empire army on the forum. Oh, that's... thank you. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, at least part of the reason. Um, but uh, have you, you you've been collecting Empire for a good while? I imagine. I have, yeah. I I uh, back in Warhammer days toward uh, the Dogs of War, so everything I've collected for the Empire sort of still has a mercenary theme to it. 
yeah, I've, I've been collecting Empire on and off, even going back to, I guess, 6th edition is when I started uh, for quite a while now. Yeah. So yeah, I like, uh, I like humans. I also gravitate toward uh, historical plastic kits as well. What yeah. I'm painting right now. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a good fit for me. For sure. Um, Michael? Um, well, I need to, again, add another asterisk. I am an awful player, so I cannot count myself as an expert. I have really controversial opinions on Empire players, which is a really good good thing that we're talking here. It's, it's kind of funny, right? Because it's like, you know, I mean, maybe this is a... I hope this isn't too much of a tangent, so if I'm going on, just reel me in, okay? But it's like, it's funny when I when you go on the forum, right? And like, you know, on the one hand, the forum is not representative of the majority of players, right? I just don't think it is. Like, there's a lot of people yeah. who play who just do not care about the forum or they... They're like eternally novice because they just go on and read the forum and you know the tactic and whatever. I just feel Empire is like the biggest bunch of armchair generals who are like they watch The Patriot with Mel Gibson, which is an awful movie, uh, but it's a guilty pleasure of mine I, anyway. Uh, and then they're like, I really love that. Uh, how can I do it in Ninth Age? And it's like that's not that's not what Empire is about, man. It's like you know <laughs> anyway that's not to answer your question sorry uh but no i am empire empire where and are my first army my first love in ninth age um i just love crappy dudes you know standing against all odds big monsters a a amen brother all my armies are just loads of crappy dude that's it's... that's that's why i'm i'm known as the militia marshal um besides the master memer um <laughs> I am the meme. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so I really love Empire in that way. Um, I love parent support. Uh, that is that is why I play Empire. I really love parent support. I love tons of crappy dudes and them working in a kind of symbiosis to pull off results and win battles with the help of things like parent support and to a lesser extent orders. So I really love that mechanic. Um, quite recently, I've been choosing my hell to die on in the forum, which is parent support. You can check that out on the EOS lab, what it is and what it should be. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Right. As I say, I love crappy dudes. That's me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I might add to that. Because again, a lot of us have our genesis in something of a familiarity with Warhammer Fantasy or whatever, right? Um, there was an old player called the Village Idiot, TVI. Um, and he, you know, kind of built lists around um parent support so that's really like a big impetus for me and a big like kind of draw for me for this for this army so again not using big fancy toys but focusing on just using uh lots of core stuff all right um for myself i'm a bit on a similar boat same as dan i uh, started this army with a mercenary thought I actually started planning this army right after uh, uh, the old world blew up, um, and as we, we were toying around with some alternatives, and I thought a mercenary army looked cool, so I started looking for for that, and uh, eventually it grew into an Emperor's Onstall army. Nice. Um, so that's why I have all these different species and such such like that. I imagine imagine I'm going on a long campaign through the barren mountains and the neighboring regions. And, just absorbing different cultures into their army. Uh, so, that's how my... do you pronounce Sunstall? Uh, uh, son, Sonstall. Sonstall. It... Yeah, well, every time Mad says it, son... I feel like an idiot. Sonstall. Son Sonstall. Yeah. But I mean, again, I, I find it hard to transition between Germanic and unintelligible English. So, <laughs> when speaking to my compatriots, we we say Sonstall. Yeah. But if I were in Germany or a, a a more civilized nation, I'd say Zon Zonstall. Yeah, I, I probably have a very Swedish version of the German oh, word. So. Unintelligible English referred to Scottish English, if anyone was wondering, as in my English. So 
Uh, we all knew. <laughs> I actually. It's kind of that. funny. Oh, sorry. Do you maybe post post production? I should offer some subtitles for the, the viewers. <laughs> I think there are options for a, 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 <laughs> automatic subtitles. I don't I know if, if I want to trust them. <laughs> you, do, you do also have you you do a suspiciously good American accent. Uh, you've done it two times now, I think. Oh, sorry. That's not. I hope that's that's not taken offensively. <laughs> no, not I at all. I'm, time, I'm more, as I said, suspicious is the right word because I don't understand how you're that good at it. <laughs> one time uh, I was in. I, this is a. I think a funny. Well, it's maybe not funny now that I've said it, but it's a, a little interlude. I was. Uh, I love doing accents because I'm. In a past life, I was a amateur dramatist. Um, and I remember I was on exchange in Austria, and there was a girl from Alabama. Is that where it is? Alabama. Yeah, and in Alabama, they've a they've a quite a delightful southern drawl. In Alabama, you know, at the end of your words, you always add you have to elongate it, you know. And then one time I impersonated her, and then people were like, "Oh my god, that was like so offensive." It's like, no, dude, I'm I'm learning from the masters, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, that's my go-to American. Is like, you know, you got you got to go down there, and but people think it's taking the neck, but you know. Apologies to any American viewers. Um, American, I love your American accent, Dan. It's so oh, iconic, you. and I, I, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I, I could replicate that. Yeah, I, I, it's funny too, because like, I don't feel like I have an accent, and maybe that's just because you know you watch a lot of Hollywood movies and it's sort of the generic American, uh, the, I, I think, unaffected English. But <laughs> it's weird because I'll go to up in the, the mountains nearby kind of two hours away from here and there's like a whole subculture there of what i think like if you go back in history i think it was like a bunch of irish immigrants because they have sort of a subtle leftover of that so i'll go there and they're all they're all speaking with this crazy accent and they'll turn to me and be like wow your accent is weird <laughs> I'm like what like, yeah. me and my brother will be out there thinking we don't have any accent at all <laughs> yes like milwaukee the Milwaukee accent is really odd, mm. and I, I was reading something about it being because I think a lot of Ger and, and historically there was a lot of German migrants mm -hmm. in in uh, Wisconsin area, uh, and there's there's a really funny video, um, I can recommend. I hope this isn't too much of a tangent, but sure. if you're interested in the Milwaukee accent, there's a video called "Surviving Edged Weapons." I think I think you can find this on YouTube. It's not for the faint hearted. It's very gruesome, but but all the recreations, it's the Milwaukee accent, and it's it's so amazing. It's like that. This is a spoken version of English. It's astounding. Um, all right. but yeah, but yeah. Hopefully, I'm intelligible. Uh, I'm sure. If anyone are. doesn't understand anything, please just um. The, shoot the, in the the, chat. This is called called the pen desk rambling software. All nobody understands anything we're saying. It's fine. That's a license to just talk crap. <laughs> of course. Uh, all right, where were we? Um, yeah. Where were we in this <laughs> rambling journey? <laughs> we uh, were talking about Emperor Sornstall and uh, how uh, I Sornstall. got into it through some uh, um, mercenary. Uh, I'll also add a caveat that I haven't played this army very much. I played one very strange t tournament that was a tag team tournament where I had a, a, a oh, cool. te teamed up with a... Um, uh, uh, with a Sylvan Elf army, and my own Empire army had a Vermin Swarm items, so it was, <laughs> a, it was a strange tournament. Too. Uh, but it was, it was very fun. Um, and I played one... And you have some battle reports, don't you? Yeah. Where people can see your miniatures, as well as on the forum. Yes, that, that is true. Uh, I have a battle report of that whole tournament, in fact. Oh, um, nice. And I have played one other game with Empire Sornstall, uh, with a full army, actually. Uh, so I do have experience. Not much, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Okay, um, let's start with the background. Uh, do you want me? What, what, should we start with the history? Should we do a quick rundown of. That would be great for the viewers, not for me, because I'm very well versed in the background. So if you could just review the background for them, not for me again, because I, I'm, yeah, just for them. So a quick Dad rundown. Here, so I'm going to pros give this nice overview. <laughs> uh, story time, we'll call it. Story time. Yeah, that's great. Um, 
so the Emperor Sonstal, uh, I think we have to mention Sunna, the le legend of Sunna, uh, the goddess who came to the earth. And it was in the eighth age, the end of the eighth, eighth age, edge, age, um, where the tribes of humanity were un united by Sunna against all kinds of different foes. And she led them to Avaras and re uh, reclaimed it from the uh, Vermin Swarm, in fact. Uh, so we circle back to uh, where we be uh, began this episode. Um, killed the Rat King and uh, uh, then died, pretty much. Um, and 200 years later, the uh, Empire was founded uh, by Leopold Trueheartened, uh, I think. And uh, on the principles of Sunna, basically, so that's an, it's a religion and very important aspect of their culture. Um, so, like uh, you uh, mentioned, uh, Michael, that uh, it felt similar to other um, other settings. Am I to assume that's Warhammer? Other settings are available, but. <laughs> You might you might be correct, but what I meant was, I mean, when you read it in summary, yeah, it does read very similar. But I'm aware that when you read like, you know, the 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 lore as it is in these accounts and like you know written testimony and stuff, charges. Um. So again, like it's, it comes down to taste. So if you if you prefer like as Dan was kind of hinting at, the more it doesn't even need to be clinical, right? It's more like just. A matter of fact, like this is the empire of Sonstal. Um, you yeah. know, like you can still weave. If you read it as a summary, and you will be disappointed because it doesn't have the flavor of the testimonies. Um, when it's given as a summary, it's. I think it loses some of that. Too. I mean, yeah. it's certainly similar to like the just uh, on the. Warhammer fantasy, like Sigmar Walton story, is almost identical because they around the sun. They don't think she was actually sun on a yeah, which would have been yeah. the same. I think it's because Games Workshop themselves were referenced mythos as well. Hmm. I think we're having some connectivity issues. The notion too in the Sunna mythos that it wasn't even Sunna at all, like that it was the lady, like the the lady of Equitanian lore, uh, is what gave her this whole notion that the entire religion of this nation was found. Uh, what, what could be a misunderstanding <laughs> is uh, I think that's something that they could be delved on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think we may be having, having some connectivity issues. We'll see if everything crashes. I think you cut out for a moment, Mada, but you seem to be back now. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, the like uh, I've been having issues watching live streams recently, so I wonder if I'm able to create live streams. Uh, but <laughs> um, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, on that note, I think one important difference uh, in in the in the history of uh, uh, the empire, compared to a lot of other settings, is that the her heroic uh, origin figure, uh, Sunna, uh, she didn't found the nation. The nation came two hundred uh -huh. years after. Yeah, sure, because that was in because in Warhammer Fantasy it was um, Volton. Mm -hmm. Is that you just said it, Dan? Sorry, maybe yeah, it's Volton. But, but he was the one who united the tribes. Yeah, he went aware whatever the nation was kind of already formed there. Um, yeah, it was Sigmar in there. Sigmar was the original Volton, was the like incarnate that came afterwards. That was during the Storm of Chaos times. Yeah, that and everybody said, "Oh, it's it's Sigmar," but it wasn't. It was like his avatar. Yeah. All right. Um, seems that the connection is doing fine i guess okay sorry um more background um one thing that i want to mention uh is from an early uh scroll uh ninth scroll is um women in so sonstal because it is expi expi 
explicitly stated that women have an equal standing in theoretically at least in in Sonshal, uh, in legally so they can join any profession they want and they can jo even join the military and they are fairly common in the military uh, especially in the higher ranks uh, i think it's like meant to convey that uh, women have like a natural connection to Sunna, so they are respected more in military uh, connections and this is something that I, I took to heart when i started my arm, uh, army and i really really wanted to have, yeah. have some women in i was going to say yeah because you've, you use those um you actually rec you actually gave me the details at one point um these like head kits where are they from again uh the female uh, head kits um i'm blank on the name Stat statuesque miniatures and they're really cool because they come in different sizes too don't they you've got yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. The heroic 28 mil and yeah the, the, more... it's a bit confusing how many variants there are but yeah. you, once you figure it out you can really find what you need so and i really rated that when i was looking at your stuff yeah i really dug that uh, we'll get into that a bit more in the uh, miniatures section of the of the stream, I think. Uh, I'll mention it again, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I, that that I found really refreshing, actually, and uh, also very inspiring in that it, it it's sort of what kicked this army off for me. I had been collecting miniatures to make some sort of army for a while, but that's th that's the thing that really sparked me and, and got me got, got me uh, planning and painting and building and converting. So that was fun for me. Uh, do you have any other bits and pieces you want to highlight in the background? No, except that I, I'll just touch on what I wish I had. Uh, I think there's eight provinces in the empire, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so eight provinces. The one thing in Warhammer Fantasy lore that I really enjoyed was there was it's. I think this mostly just comes from time. You know, this is a very young rule set and a young background. Uh, but I really enjoyed the breakdown on the differences between these provinces. Uh, you had like Stirling, which was the poor backwoodsy one. You had Averland, which was a rich one. The Nordland were the mariners. You know, so you have this, yeah. Yeah. this empire of provinces. There's something unique about them all. And I really hope that in the future, they'll we'll be able to delve in on that a bit so that you could theoretically have people make their empire of Zonstal army from a specific province. Uh, yeah. That'd be really neat. Yeah. Just... I mean, something that like Mad Mada and I kind of, I think this is what started as like, for a while back was that we'd done the same scheme for our uh, infantry, which is based on the cover of the rule book. Mm -hmm. the red, the yellow, the black, which is really cool. But yeah, you're right. It's like one of the things which is quite fun, even if you were looking at like Total War Warhammer, or even if you were just going from like Warhammer Fantasy, because I think they all were there, like the different schemes. And again, it's kind of cool on that way to have like official schemes that you can go by. Which is something I would really love to see eventually, but I know it's not a priority at the moment. Um, but yeah, as you say, like the kind of acute differences, which are almost caricature-like, you mm -hmm. know, um, and it kind of gives way to the infighting between the different electors and their own eccentricities. Yeah, um, I, I think that is something that they will expand upon. Um, oh, for sure, for sure, they, because they already hinted. Yeah, yeah, they've already hinted. I noticed that like there is they, a lot of like rivalry and bickering. Uh, and... Even the the King of Equity in supplement got into this a little bit with like the the political structure of of the continent, uh, with mm. uh, like the. King Henry of Equitaine has an alliance with Volskaya, uh, um, and. Uh, uh, the uh, Emperor Mat Matthias of uh, Sornstall has an uh, is married to the em Empress of Destria, so the Spain variant in uh, this setting more or less. Um, so they have a lot of alliances and a lot of conflict. And there was one daughter of uh, some count of uh, uh, of uh, something I can't pronounce. Something starting with said the Smerger Levit in the, in Volskaya. Um, who was like the, the potential heroes to practically the, the whole co continent, depending on how everything works out. So there is a lot of intrigue, I'm sure, uh, to be had. 
from the setting. Okay. Um, shall we move on to the rules? Let me just get my sure. militia marshal hat on. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think. The... Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, now your camera is working. Dan, Dan, <laughs> Dan's camera has been playing tricks on us for a while. Um, yeah, it's we can just see your hand frozen. Um, oh, I'm not sure. I, I think it's probably an, an issue at my end. Um, so we can just hope that it's so will sort itself out. out. Uh, but it's something I need to be conscious of for future live streams. But uh, let's uh, dig into the rules. So we usually do the good, the bad, and the gem uh, to try and get a sort of overview of the whole faction um, instead of going through every entry in the book sure. bit by bit. So um, Dan, do you want to start with a good pick? Something that is strong in the book. I was torn on this. I thought a lot about this a lot because uh, it was framed within the context of what do you put in every list or just about every list that you take. Uh, and I think I settled on what I'm painting right now, which is hand weapon shield. Uh, I, I run alchemy a lot too, so I'll, I'll typically run these guys with the flaming standard. Uh, but they are just, I also play dwarves a lot, so I'm used to having things like deep watch, these really resilient units. And uh, they're awesome. I mean, if you put one or two characters in there, it doesn't even have to be a Death Star. Uh, and then cast things like plus two armor on them throughout the game or give them rerolls to wound through the Flaming Banner. They're just super reliable, incredibly consistent, and they're a good sort of central hub for my army anyway. So yeah, they show up in every list. Yeah. As, as I said, I, I've, I've been thinking about maybe I should get one myself a unit of those, though I've painted enough infantry for a while, I think. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's down the line of things I want to add to my army. Let's uh, yeah. leave it at that. I would uh, definitely kind of chime uh, a similar tune, if I can coin a phrase, um, with what Dan said. It's interesting, though, from a modeling perspective, because these are one of the units which, again, are such a ubiquitous unit, um, which I don't necessarily know that, like, because reading your brief, Mad At, it's like expecting most lists. I think I still see great weapon guys more, but I actually suspect this is also down to, like, the modeling yeah. uh, availability, because these are one of the units, Hand Weapon and Shield, Imperial Guard, that just there's not really a lot of solid options for Finding suitable hands for these guys is quite hard. So a sword and a board arm. Um, yeah. But yeah, like just to chime in in terms of the rules aspect, um, these are probably like the most, probably like the best parent unit. But best is kind of subjective. Um, they do get quite expensive, but they're not nearly as expensive as great weapon guys, of course, because you don't pay for a great weapon. Um, but yeah, like a three up armor, parry save, no, sorry, not three. Three up armor. Yeah, three up. Yeah, three armor. up armor. Yeah. So three up armor, parry. These guys are solid. Uh, bodyguard as well. So again, you're going to throw in like cheap characters if you're me, um, or make it your kind of, your, you know, your main battle line bunker, so to speak. Um, yeah, pretty solid. But again, I I don't see a lot of them. Not as much as you would expect. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and strength four as well, right? Like, which an empire you don't really have a lot of. I mean, you don't strength have any of them actually. So, um, other than like knightly orders. So yeah, yeah, they, they com combine uh, like a very strong de defense with still a pretty substantial offense, uh, I think. So yeah, for sure, for sure. That's... Well, and and the potential yeah. because unlike again, I play dwarves. There's you can get like minus one to wound on them. But there's really no way to like buff them further. Whereas with things like alchemy, you can get them up to a one-up armor save, which yeah, is insane nice. for infantry unit. People say what? <laughs> <laughs> they got one-up armor and parry. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. All right, um, Michael, do you want to do a pick? A pick, a pick, a pick. So a good unit. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, so a unit that I expect in most lists, not necessarily my list, right? 
Um, has to be the stank. I think this is the benchmark or uh, the foundation. Not even foundation, right? But it's like, don't leave home without for yes. many, if not all, Empire players. Um, and why is that? Well, you've got a guy which is seven wounds. He's res six. He's got a one-up armor save. He's unbreakable. He shoots. He grinds. He hits like a truck because he is a truck. <laughs> If you model him appropriately. Um, a shame that you see him so often. I wish people were braver to take something else. But I also understand that, like, this is perhaps <laughs> the one thing you can kind of be like, okay, I know what this guy is going to do. And I know that he's likely not to be taken off very quickly. Um, and even though it's getting very expensive, he's still, again, you just see him all the time. Um, yeah. And it's kind of funny because people, when when if I can delve a little deeper, like when the stank was initially changed, I think it was back in like two point one. So I think I think around two point one, all the armies kind of seen something of like a non-trivial revamp. And I think one of the changes for the stank, for example, was to go from a d six mo random move to d three, so four d three and five d three if you don't want to shoot. Um, I still think the stank is very mobile. I don't. I mean people complain that it doesn't see combat it's like yeah if you have it in the back corner you know you're doing something wrong right but if you have it in the middle or just off the middle that guy it's very easy for him to get into combat and do something so i think despite that change he's still also solid as a choice because he is quite maneuverable and you can get more unique yeah I, I, I think that complaint about it not seeing combat is also a lot of the same people that are playing incredibly late like you said putting it back in a corner You've got two big blocks of 15 crop tokens that you're sitting back waiting for your opponent to run at you. And you, you blame them for not <laughs> your I'm going to deploy over here and avoid that guy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it's it's very true. It, it's a, a unit that's seen a lot um, and uh, almost to the point where it's a bit boring. Oh, I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, I'm. I, I, I do have my eyes on a few mon models for it, uh, but it's not something that I'm super stressed about adding to my army because it's, it doesn't really interest me that much. But I do yeah. understand it's a very good unit, and when I face it, it's uh, you have to consider it. That's for sure. Um, it is for sure. It is a spe very very special unit that uh, can tank a lot. But again, I think it kind of taps into a problem which is not like empire specific. But for example, is the, the same the same vein has came up in the the EOS lab wish listing slash uh, discussion thread, which I mentioned before. Yeah, is I just think people people know what works. People know what is push point point and click, uh, which doesn't require a lot of effort. And the stank definitely falls within that bracket because again, I pivot him. I don't move him, or I move him. I, do you know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's not really much skill involved using a stank. Um, and again, that's why you see it, right? Like, it's just people, people don't want to try new stuff. They don't want to, you know, take the risk of failing badly and having to go at something quite a lot of times um, to get it right or to find out how to do something differently. So again, I would, I would just say to people, like, just make lists that don't have the stank. And think, what am I going to do with that 500 points? Do you take four war machines, which all misfire, or you know, what, what else do you fill it with? Like, just just change change the game, right? Like, just change the boundaries that you've kind of built around you. Yeah. All right. Uh, for my own good pick, I'm going to pick a unit that I think is annoyingly good. That <laughs> like I feel forced to have it in my army in this in my particular build because I feel like a fool if I don't and that's the arcane engine. Mm. Like I much like you, Michael. I I love the infantry uh, style approach to uh, the, uh, playing this army, and it feels like such a slam dunk to have a, a, an arcane engine to give them a nice nice boost. Um, 
that I, I almost feel compelled to to include it. Yeah. Uh, and is there a particular variant that you like? Or? I, 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 th that's what, what I think is really interesting about it. I think both are really, really good. And I can't figure out which one I want. want. Uh, mm. I, I'm actually right now building my model for it. And oh, I, cool. I'm not going to model any, any difference. Uh, I'm going to use yeah. it for, for both variants. Um, but I, I can't decide which one I, want, uh, I like the most. I think I like the distracting, uh, the arc and shield one. More, but I, general, I, I, I believe the same. Yeah, I'm generally a defensive person when I play. Um, oh, despite being an orc player, I, I don't know <laughs> that, that adds up. But I, I like gr grinding, so I want distracting. That's for sure. Um, and but, but at the same time, plus one to hit is not too shabby. And I think the spell uh, isn't the perception of strength that you get get on the. Uh, Percep Perception strength is a distracting one, yeah. and I think it's ice and fire on the um, lightning reflexes wagon. Okay, yeah, and that's which is still solid. Yeah, both are good yeah. spells. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I don't want to cut you off or no, no. jump in, steal the space, but um, a lot of lists I was running over lockdown, uh, thanks to you beam. So as um taking sword and board in some form. So usually for me, this would be like two parent units of 35 sword and board heavy infantry, three support units of 20 sword and board heavy infantry, and one unit of like 35 Imperial Guard sword and board. And yeah. if you take, usually for a wizard, I always take cosmology because I think cosmology overall is the best lore. You know, you just, you've such a versatile lore. You've got buffs, debuffs, Two versions of each spell yep. right so you know it's it's bang for your buck if you're poor and budget conscious like me right but yeah you're looking at distracting with parry on almost everything so even though your guys are totally crap it's like yeah you need to go through like hitting me on fives usually yeah and yeah it's it's so tasty especially with that on the other hand though Oh, and sorry, like on top of that as well, like if you run cosmology, I, uh, you can take like perception strength, of course. And I think yep. it meshes really well with having that redundancy from the bounce build ones. Because in this list, I would have two distracting arcane engines. So I would have three versions <laughs> of perception of strength. Oh man. And when I would play when I would play games, I would be like, right, I'm gonna do the the full one first. And they would usually dispel this. Then I'd do another couple of spells and then go back to the two bound versions yeah. of perception of strength. And you're putting and again it's like it, it works it works for everything. You can be fighting yeah. something elite and make it really not as great. You can be fighting something crap like skeletons and then making them like strength one or something. So yeah. it's very tasty. But even then there's some I remember in the past there was people who were doing like double blocks of Imperial Guard with great weapons. Yeah, which and, is and, quite a hefty list, but again, you can already see the synergy with the lightning reflexes. Where yeah, I, I again faced, you, faced yeah. that. It's yeah. Um, it, it was a really really bad match for me. Uh, <laughs> but but it, he, he had he had he had just one block, and I think he had both wagons, both variants, but yeah. nothing at Um, and my my big uh, graveyard unit went into him, and I think we ended up hitting on fours, both of us. Uh, for our, the majority of our, our attacks, um, and it, it was such a nightmare the, the dice rolls because four up, and you you roll like twenty dice, and he got he hit with seventeen and I hit with three <laughs> three, and yeah, th right. that happens with four up, <laughs> so it, yeah. was, it was such a nightmare. <laughs> but it was most, mostly as the dice then, but um, yeah, it's um, it's there's potential in in that build as well. I think I think. Do you usually run them, or do you have in mind to run them as like a character amount, or uh, the cheap the, special version? The list I'm looking at for uh, uh, November will have it as a character amount for a ship. Cool, yeah. Uh, and uh, let, let's just dive into that because it's such a cool segue. The the apprentice wizard for Sonstal is cool, I think, because of the her hereditary. Because yeah. he can, unlike every other apprentice, he has four spells to choose, choose from. Yes, default. Yeah. And that's pretty neat. Um, 
so and then very cheap, and especially on a uh, on a Arcan engine. Do you have any comments on the engine, Dan? I have a distracting engine in all of my lists too. But again, I, <laughs> I run Imperial Guard, Sword and Board, so the yeah. combination is just so brutal. Uh, again, especially if I'm fortunate enough to get plus two armor off on him if I'm running alchemy. <laughs> One up armor, parry, and distracting. I don't... Yeah. Yeah, grind for days. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, so, how about some bad picks? And uh, let's keep looping around. So, Dan... Yeah, this one, um, I I want to like them, uh, but it's writers with hand weapon and, or not hand weapon, light lance. Oh, and light lance, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Because the, the problem is the opportunity cost is so high that I can't think of a time that I wouldn't rather have a base one pistol versus a light lance and a shield. And because we already have a good medium cavalry option in electoral cav out of core no less yeah. uh, i just i could never find a way to justify taking them yeah that's very true i i barely even rem were aware, uh, yeah. aware of these guys existing so that's a <laughs> that's an excellent pick uh they are not seen very often um which is a bit of a shame because it's a cool concept like uh, I, I like all of the writer variants um but um these guys do are pretty darn cool i think so yeah, that's a shame. I think maybe if, even if they just came with heavy armor as well, that might change it too, because it would take them, you know, from a what would they be a four up to a three up armor, yeah. without having to pay the extra points for the heavy armor. I, I don't know. I still think I'd rather have a pistol. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's very true. Um. Yeah. Do we, do we, what do we think of writers overall though? I mean, you kind of see them, I think, all the time. Um, yeah. They're a very cost-effective choice. Um, I mean, everyone I... Well, I mean, I think when I play, you know, people locally, I'll name drop Cam. Is that his name? Fraz Cam on the forum, who absolutely detests writers because they're so, they're so good. <laughs> um, I mean, you've got a really mobile unit, you know, 816, Again, you can give it a respectable armor save, you know, so like five up or well, five up base, I believe, and then can go to a four up with heavy armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's and then again, you can have like two shots apiece. Strength four shooting is always nice. AP two as well, right? So, and they're very cheap. They you can run them at like less than two hundred points. Um, and again, with that movement and light troops, you can get them to where you need to. So, I think they're one of the most solid choices. Um, I prefer pistols over repeater guns um yeah i think repeater guns are quite good as like a distraction carn effects um i know in the past people have ran like i think before they imposed the condition or the, the hard limit on how many writers you could have in total people would run like big big units of them and just blast with like 30 shots um so i think i think people are again it's like any shooting people are afraid of like what it can do rather than what it's really likely going to do yeah. Um, so I actually think the repeater gun version are kind of like what's the word? Um, they look much better than they are, I believe. So I think the pistol version, either as Dan said, with one pistol or two, is just the way to go. Um, yeah. And one of those units that have a name, you know, so people people will hear, you know, they're always taken. People, you know, know that they can dance about. So people prioritize them, I find. <laughs> and that's great because it's like, well, I can do other stuff with, you know, the rest of my dudes. So. Yeah. I like him too. I have a, a, a 10 of them painted. And um, yeah, they, they are good. Good fun. Mobile and shooty. All right. Um, Another bad pick, Michael, if you please. Ah. Okay, this is not necessarily like bad, but you don't see them taken, which is why I'm going to say them. At least I don't think you really see them taken. As Imperial Rangers, um, why I think they're not really taken, I think it's like, you know, writers can vanguard, but you have nothing else that can really scout in an Empire army. So I think when people play Empire and they, they think, okay, I'm going to take Rangers out for a shot, 
you don't really know how to utilize Scout, if at all. <laughs> so usually you will put it... I mean, maybe this is just betraying the fact I'm an awful player, right? Which, again, I've conceded to, so, you know, that's... I'm being honest. Um, but I, I think it's that way... Like, either you commit them far too much ahead and, you know, they're gone from a fireball or something similar. Um, or you just don't... Again, like, so you don't really know how to use them. I think yeah. the issue I have with them, compared to, like, Militia, which I love... And I will, I will cry if I lose them in the lab process. <laughs> Hope the team is listening. But um, the thing is, the thing is, Rangers cause panic, which for parent support heavy builds I kind of hate because it's like, why are these five naked guys panicking my battle hardened trip? So that's why, for me at least, I would often take militia instead. Okay. Um, they're kind of comparable in some ways, right? I mean, I think even if you take a, a unit of 10, yeah. the price is quite similar. I, I can't really remember, but I think it is quite similar. But it just seems to me that because, like significant makes them so much more useful. Militia, at least. Um, it, it, it's an interesting pick. I uh, My backup pick for good was actually Imperial Rangers. Ah, cool. Uh, because uh, I, I always include them. All, all six games have included them. Um, and uh, it's uh, like 90 points for five. And yeah. They yeah. are just in the way. I, I love that. <laughs> uh, and, and there was one game at the at the tag team tournament where uh, uh, the first turn they got, got a, a fireball or something to the face. <laughs> yeah. all, all but one one uh, died. But the last guy, he just kept running around and being awesome the rest of the game. I loved him. The best type of chaff, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, that that was a really really fun game. Yeah, I mean it's like I've no doubt that they they do have uses, but it's that way where when I look at lists, which I, I mean I guess yeah. I'm kind of looking more locally. Like I just don't really see them at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't blame you because I I had trouble picking up a, a, a bad unit. Uh, I kept going through the book and and looking and. Like... Yeah, I mean it's 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 funny because apart from like the the one that Dan said, which is so true, like you never <laughs> see that unit at all, yeah. right? It's like barely even aware that it exists. Yeah, and it's it's funny, but I mean I've said this before, uh, but I don't think the Empire book is in a bad spot at all. Like there's there's nothing which apart from that really obvious elephant in the room. Yeah. Which isn't which isn't me with my COVID weight gain, by the way. Uh, but <laughs> it's like. Other than that, there's not really anything which is like problematic. Yeah, I don't think. Which is a good sign, I think. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me try and uh, see if I can find one more thing that is a bit bad. And uh, um, my first pick for bad is the artificer. Ah, uh, that's a good one. I. Do you mean it's a good pick or a good unit? No, that's a good pick. <laughs> He's saying you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like I did to him, so it's only fair. Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I, I've been struggling to find him, find him a place in lists. It's, uh, I like going car character heavy with like I want a, a good fighter. Uh, it's difficult in Empire, I guess, uh, and I want a few mis uh, wizards. And in Empire, I always want to, want a prelate, and it just goes on and yeah. on and on. And then you don't have uh, have any space for something like an artificer. And yeah, maybe it's like a problem overall with with artillery because it doesn't you, seem yeah. that worthwhile. I like taking a war machine or two, but like going deep in it, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's I think that's a really good point. I mean. I remember, I think there was a month or two ago, somebody was asking about how to get bang for buck from War Machines. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't think you can, but this is not a problem for Empire. Sorry, this mm -hmm. is not an Empire-exclusive problem. This is a problem with War Machines. Um, yeah. Which, to tie back to Vermin Swarm, is one of the things that I I didn't really like. For example, for example, Vermin Swarm have quite reliable War Machines because they don't misfire in the usual way. Yeah. Um, and the same can be said for some Empire machines, right? Because um, the Rocketeer doesn't yeah. um, misfire in the usual way, so he is actually reliable in that you're never going to have a turn until that case where he potentially dies, where he's not going to be able to do something. Um, the same to some extent with the Hellblaster Volley Gun, which I think is the least likely to misfire 
in the traditional sense. Yeah, it, it, it often ro rolls at least one six. Uh, yes, and gets minus, it, minus one to it, but it doesn't kill itself. Whatever, whatever it doesn't it kill is. itself. Yeah, because you need at least like two sixes for that yeah. to even be a chance of occurring. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing as well. Like, I think it's actually a bit of a trap to kind of, you know, build around an artillery park. You know, you have a, a big unit of light infantry, give them whatever flavor of weapon you want, give them the um, marksman's pennant, give them an artificer who's going to buff one of your war machines, put in a, a pyromancy adept for flaming swords. You then have a lot of points synced into something which is so static and only takes one totemic beast, for example, or a <laughs> yeah. meter to just ruin. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people say, like, you know, you need to invest to get more out of it, but then you just look at parent support, for example, and light infantry within eight inches of a parent unit, even if it's 15 strong, is just so much more reliable. And even yeah. then, you might already have, like, a cosmology or divination adept, at least. Or even just an apprentice, right? And you just take the number one spell and give plus one aim to somebody. It's, it's in my opinion, it's just so much more cost effective. Um, yeah. But that said, I do think War Machines are cool for, like... I mean, I know this is a bit of a tangent, but I will bring it back to the Artificer. But I think War Machines are cool, like... I like to play War Machines, like, I take them and I stick them in a corner. Like, one in a corner. And it's like, if you want to go and kill three naked guys and a a pie launcher then please please feel free because then i've lost like 190 points yeah and yeah I, I have a fairly similar approach so. yeah but the thing is the, the issue i have with the artificer if i can go a bit if i can take it back to that yeah um the artificer gives a steady no um ready in fire to a unit that he's in yep and this is kind of it's it's like an odd choice. Like it, it, in in some level, it makes sense. It's what you would expect. This kind of shooty character, he'll do something for a shooty unit. But already, you're going to be playing this unit within eight of a parent unit, three ranks deep. Usually, like most most times, you're going to be doing that. So you're already going to be be having orders from, yeah, you know, either the banner of unity, which multiplies orders out to support units, or you're going to, you know, have a um, great tactician. And give it that way so it seems to me a bit kind of redundant um and i yeah. know that they've been iteratively they've always been like reducing the cost of the artificer but um yeah he's definitely not a staple i think there's some cool things you can do like you can have a pretty good chaff guy but again you're just as well i think of taking a marshal who can just give orders anyway yeah i, I wonder if the best build frame is just teaming up him, him up with a wally gun yeah, that seems yeah. to be the, the best way to get some bang for your buck because the volley gun with the artificer gains a lot. Like yes. plus one to hit, and you get to reroll re one die, so you you're never gonna miss fire, and you're almost never gonna get the minus one to yeah. hit from yeah. misfire. So that seems like a good combo. Okay, uh, let's move on to the gems, the most interesting part, I think. Dan, do you wanna start? Yeah, this one I'm gonna steal from my friend Young Stewart on the forums. Uh, Stewart on the forums, and it's he has suggested a apprentice wizard on a Great Griffin, which comes out at 210 points and is incredibly versatile. You got a guy that can fly around, choose one of four spells, like you said at the beginning. Uh, he's great at war machine hunting or threatening chaff or flank charges because again, a Great Griffin is no slouch of combat. So yeah. I think it's a uh, Really cool option for. Uh... That's incredible. Yeah. I I, I love a pit putting my wizards on weird mounts. That's like my 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 jam, and I love mm -hmm. weapons. Why haven't I thought of this? I, I... yeah, I, I thought the same thing when he told me. <laughs> <laughs> and again, for two hundred and ten points, like I would pay that just for the Griffin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That 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 sounds incredible. I'm gonna I I, I will have to look into this. Um. I had I had done like building at least three gr griffins with different military uh, guys mounted on top, guys and girls. Um, but now I'm gonna have maybe get a fourth one and put a wizard mm -hmm. on top. Uh, and I'm not complaining. I love griffins. Um, man, yeah, that, that's that's a wonderful pick. Um, cool. 
I, I don't know if there's much else to say about it. Um. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. I mean, I, I think a while back um, you had like the Flying Circus Empire list. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, it's, it's something niche, right? I mean, it's not entirely effective, but it's a fun thing to do, right? And yeah, you would have like wee guys like that, so... Um, but yeah, it's kind of similar to like, you know, for orcs and goblins, you see, um, you would take like a, sh a, a witch doctor, goblin witch doctor apprentice yeah. on a chariot, and it's yep. like, okay, I now have another chariot with a spot missile. Um, I, I used kind of that, that one a few times. <laughs> and it's so cost effective as well. Um, yeah. That's a really good pick. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Like, I think I just excluded it from my mind because because of orcs and goblins because there you can take the the shaman on a the orc shaman on, on a wyvern, but he has yeah. to be a master to do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that's true. There's no such such limit for the the empire wizard, and that's <laughs> that that's neat. All right. Okay, you get some uh, some big shoes to fill there, Michael. Do you think you can come up with another good gem pick? Unfortunately, I'm only going to fill worn out slippers with my pick. Um, <laughs> my pick is boring, uh, but I stand by it. My pick for the best, the gem, the uncut gem, if you will. Uh, I'm not being paid by Netflix to endorse uh, the Adam Sandler flick, but I do hear it's really good. But no, my pick for the gem is. 20 sword and board heavy infantry mm. and i've already made this point in the forum so sorry if you've already heard this but i'm going to say it again because i want to see lists with 20 sword and board heavy infantry and i want to see three of them right <laughs> why do i like these guys well let me tell you right you've got orders i can make these guys march 12 they're the best chaff they're better than a BSB chaff, which you might have heard on another podcast I was on. Um, and another thing which people always forget, right? Like if you're using it as chaff or if you're using it in the flank or if you're feeding it to just like slow down the opponent, again, like it's chaff, right? You have the rule, which is like if you're within eight of a parent unit, you have their ranks for steadfast, which mm -hmm. always catches out people. It's like, oh, you're going to auto break. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm within my 40 man block. I'm holding. You know, it's like, and there's so much you can do with them. And then you fail the, the discipline test anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to throw that bit in, right? <laughs> Yikes. Um, but even in terms of like using them to get a flank charge, um, you know, yeah. when you're pulling off like a counter charge, usually a counter charge, I mean, the counter charge is easier to do because you can gauge the distances. You can set up for like an almost guaranteed charge or. A charge of like you know like seven or eight inches which is quite doable especially if you have two units supporting um you're going to be up like five or six combat res i mean especially if you've got parry it really makes getting to the six combat res all the more doable from parent support um i just think these guys are great and i just wish that people would um force themselves to try <laughs> something that isn't light infantry it's it's they're so good they're so good because even in cases like i remember playing a game with um someone and i just knew that i couldn't fight their block their big death star so what i did was like one by one i just fed like really crap support units so move them up in a way that would chaff them and take the take them out to a different bit being within eight inches meant that they stuck for quite long um and yeah, like it's, even, I mean, they're so versatile. It also gives you a lot of scoring. Um, and in terms of like heavy infantry support units, which I guess is what I'm talking about, because I am saying like sword and board is the way to go. I think they're the best support unit because you've got parry. And even though you've got, you know, if you're in the flank, you've got maybe like five or six attacks coming back. The fact that they're hitting you on like a four or a five with an arcane engine just means that you have that uh, breaking steadfast kind of almost guaranteed as yeah. soon as you take halberds or spears granted you maybe get extra ap or you get strength four but these guys are always hitting on fours like are usually hitting on one fours like you said so you're not expecting them to like rake up kills you're just expecting them to be like uh kind of play the game 
quote unquote game there, right? Where it's like, no, these are here for a specific purpose. Yeah, um, I I, th I think you're absolutely right about this pick. Like, I, I uh, I'm pretty sure that the game game I took I played with a full army. I did take a unit of tw twenty uh, sword and board guys, and they were good. Like, they... you you can catch people off guard with parent support unit too, because yeah. so few people use it because everyone's running cav stars and you yeah. know shooting units yeah. these days. Like, I, I ran into a game the other day where somebody didn't know that support charge was part of the parent unit not counter charge but if i'm off yeah, offensively yeah. charging you there's a support charge rule that i think most people don't even know exists where i can claim up to plus six to my rank bonus yeah and i get to declare the charge after the charge is successful from the parent unit so it's this really cool interaction uh that i think because so few people run it you can really catch people off guard just with this humble unit of hand weapon and shield heavy infantry yeah uh, do you usually play them with any command? Um, I I like to give them full command because it helps to round out. I mean, I don't actually give a shit about getting like hitting one one two five core. I like to go above core because again, it's like sword and board heavy infantry are so cost effective. Two hundred ninety five points get you, gets you thirty five dudes, right? But if I'm concerned about rounding out core, then I find like taking full command helps to get there quite easily. Okay. And even then, right? Like if it's 145 points or 175 points or anywhere in between, yeah, that is such a steal. Yeah. I think. Um, I, I I think like a, a musician is a minimum of this, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I I would. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I kind of. I would rate the standard above a musician. Yeah, I for guess the support that... for the flank charge because then again I'm getting like at least two or three from banners if yeah. I have a BSB or another support in charge. So yeah, that's true. Um, Banner, banners is good. I was just gonna say that my choice. I always take a champion <laughs> in my support <laughs> units. So it's interesting, and the reason for that is like I run two units of twenty halberds support units in a lot of my lists, and I always yeah. take champions because, from my perspective, the most important thing is that they make the charge. Uh, yeah. So that's the only reason I take a champion every time, and also cool things like if I'm running it out on their own, you know, a dragon lord or something. I have yeah. one turn where I can challenge them out. So yeah, that's true. Okay, so we, we take full command between uh, between us. That's <laughs> between that's us. Obvious. <laughs> that's obvious. It's the it's the right choice. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's also thematic too, right? Yeah. I loved I loved some command, that's true. I have a big unit of sword and board painting up, painted up, and I'm yeah, they're gorgeous. I think I should should make another command set so that I can run them in two units. Uh, I actually have to I have to confide something, Mad. All right. To you and our viewers at home, I may have copied your shield idea. As soon as I seen it, I'm like <laughs> North Star. Fireforge shields. Okay, get me get me three packs of these. So. <laughs> they are gorgeous shields. So They're really I don't, nice, I don't yeah. blame you. I don't blame you at all. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a great pack, and they, and they have so many options too. So um, again, where... this podcast is not affiliated with North Star or Fireforge Ministry. Um... <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hinted, nudge, nudge. Oh God, I wish we were. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, shall we move on to the last jump pick? Yes. Uh, and I'm gonna go uh, out of the box, out of the book, even. And I'm oh. gonna pick the Imper oh. Imperial Giant. That's my oh, jam. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love the, the dude. Um, when, when I, I had giants in my army before this supplement. I use them as an arcane Ar 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 engine, but uh, now that I have giants, I have to get an actual arcane engine. Um, but I'm I'm happy to use my giants as, as, as giants because they are so fun to play as well. Um, and we just talked about parent and support, mm -hmm. and the imperial mm -hmm. giant gets the support rule. And while he can't use orders, he can use the support charge. And that catches people out. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and a giant suddenly charging you in the flank is interesting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I love everything about him. 
I um, in my in the last in, in the only game I played with with, with the giants, I took uh, one small giant with the the volleygun option, and I played him really poorly. He didn't do much of anything, um, but uh, I uh, think there's some gas in him. Um, he oh. can he can stand and shoot as a support reaction with a volleygun, a bit a bit weaker volleygun, but still a volleygun. Um, and or he can counter charge and he, he can move uh, seven inches and still shoot, hitting on the garbage but still shoot. Um, and yeah, he can do some neat, neat stuff. And I also took a big rudder giant with, with just a club, um, just to be able to stomp on that infantry. And because it's a cool model. Um, have you tried them? Your... I've not, but I have um, really two. I have two nice miniatures for. Empire Giants, yeah, which I would love to take to an upcoming tournament because I am running a like cavalry bus, and I think once that has parent unit, these are the best yes. support units for that because they can keep up with the movement of the cav bus. Yeah, um, but not not yet. Um, but yeah. I'm really looking forward to uh, one day. Th that's the build them. I've been thinking about doing a, a big cav bus with parent parent unit, and then two giants with big fan yeah. Suna running up. Beside but even him. even if um, I mean, I hope I'm not taking up too much space so I'll, i mean i want to i want to hear what dan's thoughts are um but i think the thing is like there's not really any support unit i think which can reliably rake up wounds this is perhaps the one area like in empire combats that it's quite easy to get a lot of static combat res you yeah. know you you have a big bus of dudes you have um even the legion standard to guarantee that even if you lose a rank on a support unit you're getting the plus six uh combat res bonus then you've got banners, you've got a support charge, a flank charge, you know, so it's very easy to get the static res, but it's quite hard, I think, sometimes to get the wounds to make, like, it almost like an auto break. I mean, this is why when, like, Hermnard done, like, TVI, you see, like, the marshals have uh, great weapons, because, you know, you're hitting on threes, likely, you're winning on twos, so this is like an auto win kind of thing. But in terms of parent support, there's, or sorry, in terms of support units, halberds are the greatest strength, but again, you're just hitting on fours. Yeah. Right? They're not, like, super great. Janks, on the other hand, they're also hitting on fours, but they're going to be <laughs> strength five or strength six or yeah. maybe even higher. So you're looking at like wounds on twos. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think like the club option is like perhaps that's my go to option. Yeah. It's, it, uh, I, I want to, to try the big fan of Sona someday because getting battle yeah. focus uh, sounds fun. Um. Because uh, yeah, and, and and the the always being able to, to attack because that means the turn that you get killed, you yeah. get to attack with 11, 11 attacks. Yeah. Boom. With Fatal Focus, uh, only strength strength five, but still. Um, so yeah, it's. I'm curious about that. He's very cool. I I've never played with it myself, but I remember the first time I read the entry when I saw that it had support unit. My first thought was like, "Oh, we can give support unit to other things too," because that's cool. <laughs> and that's what I hope with the LAV process that maybe we start expanding on that a little bit with giving support yeah. unit to other stuff. Maybe even introducing another infantry unit, like Michael was talking about, that can actually like do some yeah. work in I, combat. I, rack I, I, up I've wounds. really been wishing that you can take Imperial Guard with support unit. Unit that would be great. Right, even right. I was even thinking like more outside the box, but yeah, that's simple enough. Give them yeah. support unit, maybe weapon master or something like that. But well, oh, how about like uh, oh, Dan, Dan, you're starting unit. to sound like Smithen. You're starting to sound like Smithen. Let's not get too excited. Not go there, right? You're right. I'll be quiet. <laughs> Jeez. But like, how about like ambush or something like that? Like a unit with ambush. Oh, yeah. And support unit. You actually, that's you actually cool. had me for a moment there. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um. Yeah, guys. What are you guys? Are you, you guys have been drinking too much pain. Don't don't put that in your mouth again. All right. Uh, all right i'll take my steam tank but no it's like i actually love for example i mean i mentioned this on your um free companies uh blog uh dan oh, yeah. and if anyone's watching you haven't checked it out go and look at it it's a lot of fun i would say i love the hired swords because it really reminds me of why in like old village idiot lists you would always see as a support unit like 10 or 12 militia and this is like 6th <laughs> edition Warhammer, right? Because I think a flank charge in 6th edition was like automatically disrupted ranks or something. Yep. So that was why people just had like the shittest support unit. And then I look at the, the hired swords and I'm like, well, these guys look like they could be homeless peasants, like militia. Yep. 
So I really, I really dug that. Hey, but yeah, that's a, that. that's the thing. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, this is maybe going on to like lab wish listing a little bit, but prior to two point one, state militia were support units, and I understand. I, I mean, I understand like the reasons that kind of seen them lose that. You know, because back then the stead, uh, ready aim fire order was plus six inches to shoot. Yeah. So yeah. you then had pistols, which were like 18 inches. Uh, you know, and again, this is like strength four AP3. It's pretty solid. And like, how is it shooting further each turn? Um, but at the same time, I think that's actually been one of like the, the kind of, again, like the ch- the Empire book is in a good, is in a good spot. But I think being deprived of at least an option for another support unit, and even though it's probably obviously crap, right? Like the support, like state militia support are not good because they don't even have light armor, they don't have a shield, you can't give them a shield. But I think seeing like an option for another support unit, another infantry support unit, I think would be really, really lovely. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um... That's about done it does it for the rules. Are there any other things we wanna point out and highlight? We can do some last final takes, uh, quick takes if you want to. Any items that spring out that are particularly good? Well, it apparently you, oh, is not taken by anybody, and that's Exemplar's Flame. I can't believe people don't take this more often. And maybe it's because I run like hand weapon shield Imperial Guard, so the notion of just Tossing a veil token to give him lethal strike is uh, so appealing to me. But I, yeah, I, I got some flack because I have another homebrew where I put Exemplar's Flame in it, and everybody's like, "No one takes this. Why did you put Exemplar's <laughs> Flame?" And I can't, I can't believe no one's taking this item. But again, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> I, 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 I've been looking at that item, and it, it looks really good. But I, I, for some reason, I can't fit it fit it into my army. I don't know. Um, I think it's the same issue with like seeing uh, Inquisitors. In any flavor, is that the character allowance usually runs very tight, yeah. and I think yeah. people people have their go-to builds. So again, they're afraid to leave home without them. So that means that they don't have space for cool toys like this. Actually, the last event I was at, like two weeks ago, another Empire player there brought Exemplar's Flame. Uh, so I was, like, oh my goodness, that's the first time <laughs> I've I've seen it. I mean, I think for the way I play, it's not very good because none of my units really stand out yeah you know like i mean I, i've got i've got I'll, i've got buckets of crap right so they all do the same thing they don't really have special banners or anything um so it doesn't really fit there but on the other hand if you look at those lists which revolve around like the one big unit of halberdiers or the one big unit of um imperial guard yeah. I mean, it's a bit, maybe it's a bit more redundant for Imperial Guard, but at least for heavy infantry, if it's spears or well, not spears, but certainly halberdiers, which I think is quite popular on the continent, I hear. Yeah. Then I think it certainly shines there because if you're in horde formation, fighting extra rank, then those sixes will rake up. Um, I, I should probably yeah. try it out because I, I do run those big units of halberdiers, and yeah, it, it's it seems good. It looks really good on paper. I, I should try it out. Um, and you mentioned one other unit that I want to make a last pick off, and that's the Inquisitor. Uh, ah, partic- nice. Particularly the, the, this guy that I'm painting, the Inquisitor with a crossbow. Because I, I, I've been looking at it and taking an Inquisitor, giving him silver bullets and a crossbow, and you have like a mini bolt thrower that hits on two up. <laughs> and I, I, I wonder if there's maybe some sort of value in this, uh, because it's a ball thrower that doesn't count against the, the armory category, so if you go really heavy on the on shooting, maybe? I don't know. It's I'm, I'm curious about it. That's all I say. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone has ever tried it, but um, who knows? Yeah, I mean, the, bolt, the, the crossbow is not... I mean, I've seen some people do kind of uh, like kind of cool stuff with it, but it's usually like a repeater pistol or abrasive pistols. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but they were running it in like a unit of like max militia. So I think you had like twenty or no, you had like I think fifteen is the max you can take uh, skirmishing. And I think somebody, yeah, so fifteen. I had like fifteen state militia with irregulars, and then he had uh, uh, what's he called, inquisitor with 
uh, silver bullets on like a repeater gun or something and the crown of autocracy to just so when you fleed you would like quite reliably rally um but yeah that's a good that's a good show and again that's like a, that's quite a good character who could babysit uh like a light infantry yeah. you know because then yeah. he can keep up with their shooting with like 30 inch range yeah and, and then and, you've got a guy and, who's and, quite and you can get accurate on him as well which is, yeah which is not yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if there's gas in the tank. Uh, really, the, the true way to pe- play Inquisitors is the w- way I've done it uh, the, one, the one time, or five games at, at a tournament, is with um, uh, the, uh, what, the Swarm Master Sword of the old uh, Vermin Swarm that gives you 3d6 attacks. That's good. And also the Scurrying Whale, so that is um, March 20. That, that's also yeah. nice. I, I can recommend that, that, that combo. It's... Very, very useful. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the items were uh, balanced with that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> they probably weren't. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun tournament. Okay, uh, let's move on to miniatures. Uh, if that's fine with you. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to start, Michael, with a miniature pick? Uh, yeah, um, I wonder if you already have the image up. Uh, yeah, I, I'll... Uh... Pre- work on presenting again. Uh, so kind of like Dan said, um, I'm also a big fan of like historical miniatures. Yeah. Um, and oh, it's kind of funny. Your screen share is like looking into the matrix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not meant for this. <laughs> uh, you were talking about uh, these guys, perhaps. Ah, these guys here. Yeah, exactly. So, um. I love metal miniatures, but they're also the bane of my life. Um, Amen. Because I didn't know Amen. when I got back into the hobby that you should wash them. So I have l- quite do, delightfully painted the Empire dudes, but they're all do, terribly chipped. Do you mean varnish them? Uh, no, to wash the metal for like oh, the, wash before to get them. the seal before oh, that. Oh yeah. yeah, you should do that too. Yeah, I don't yeah. do that. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit of a noob here. Uh, but yeah, um, and yes, varnishing in between stages. So, yeah. I mean, even after you do the undercoat, I mean, I usually do like a zenithal undercoat. So after that, do a coat of varnish. Yeah. Um, and then after the base layer, do a coat of varnish. Yeah, um, varnish, and varnish, varnish. The Imperial Guard that I I finished in the last couple of months, which you can see on like the Scottish Wildling uh, Painting League on the forum, Um I finished them with three coats of varnish because I just did not ever want to go back <laughs> and have to top up any details. Um, but yeah, so Foundry, so War Games Foundry have a huge line of Landsknecht miniatures. Um, yeah. They're all in one piece, which, again, I really like the appeal of multi-pose models because you get bits, you can make conversions and stuff. But I think the details you often get in metal miniatures are much crisper than a lot of like plastics. It's obviously getting a lot better now, right? I mean, plastics is kind of catching up a lot with uh, the detail you would get in metal miniatures, but I really love these guys. Really iconic Landsknecht, uh, Warhammer 6th edition, whatever vibe. Yeah. Um, and the really cool thing is, um, so I pick out this one in particular, uh, but there's several lines of um, of these type of uh, Landsknecht miniatures from um War, um, from War Games Foundry, and you can actually build up a unit where I think maybe like 48 or 40 of your heavy infantry can all be a unique guy, <laughs> which I think is like really cool. And the, the 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 gradient with which they're holding the pike or halberd actually like increases or decreases. Um, so really cool. I really love these guys. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, I. Uh have some miniatures from uh, Warmonger miniatures, which I think is a... Uh, yes, that's a sister part... company, I think. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, they, they have a very similar feel, and, and I, think it, I think it's the same guys running it. I think uh, it is, yeah. They have, like, the old... Because I think these guys used to sculpt... Well, I mean, so some of these are Perry sculpts, I think, after they left Games Workshop. Yeah. Um, but there was also, like, the original... Uh, is it Marauder miniatures, which was previously... Yeah. What Games Workshop was like originally, I think. Yeah. Um. So they have like the old orc sculpts and really lovely shields. Yeah. Um. And they also have uh, orcs in Landsknecht uniform, and that's yes, wonderful. that's right. Yeah. So if you're looking to do a, a mercenary army uh, with Landsknecht orcs, then that's the place to go. Warmonger miniatures. 
so. um yeah i mean i could talk on and on about different Landsknecht, Landsknecht uh miniatures available but um <laughs> I'll let Dan jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make a, make a pick, Dan. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you have this one prep, but since we're already talking about them, uh, I, I choose Warlord uh, Landsknechte. Yep. And a, uh, it's cool that it was so Warlord is kind of hit and miss for me. I, I really do love multi part plastic kits and especially historical kits. Uh, but Warlord, what they did here, they have a uh, pension for buying up other people's figures. Yeah. That's what happened here. A company called Pro Gloria that had a Kickstarter where they were going to do this multi part plastic kit and it never. So, Warlord bought it up and they have a couple of different variants. I think there's a there's like a pole arm or a Zweihander option and then there's yeah. a handgunner crossbow option. So, the one I have is a Pike one. A cool yeah, kit. They're very that's well sculpted. The, the one on screen here, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I got. Yeah. I, I have one of these boxes too and it's wonderful. Um, I have 16 pigment sprues, which I'm wanting to sell. So if anyone would like some land snakes, hit me up. I, I have um, a, a few I can sell as well. Yeah. Oh, well, competing companies? What is uh, but yeah, uh, like, see, even if you go to the sprue there, uh, yeah. the last picture is there. Uh, they're they're really out. lovely because you have these dollies. I call them dollies, but you have like the, the torso and the legs together. Yeah, You've got quite a nice variant variation between like armored and unarmored um and actually the detail as well is like really lovely um yeah. the, the pro again i mean you can tell it's good detail because it's not made by warlord it was made by pro gloria <laughs> right um but yeah really lovely it's quite sad though um because if you look at the old pro gloria site they yep. actually had like marching lance connects so they actually had like a two hander in both hands which i think is so a shame that they haven't released because it, these yeah. guys are like at attention yeah and yeah but they're still really great you've got a really affordable option yeah of making a landsknecht s empire of zonstal army yeah i think i think there are three boxes of them as you mentioned dan uh these guys the spy handler ones where you get uh, and i have one of those boxes as well and there, there you get uh, pretty much the same sprue but it's different wep weapon options so. Uh, yeah. so you, you get instead of the pikes, you get uh, the uh, Svai handler swor swords on the on the sprue, and then you get metal uh, halberds, yeah. halberds, extra extra bits for to ma for making halberds. Um, no. So th that was the kit I should have brought all all along because I don't use the pike uh, parts at all. Uh, yeah, I'm the I same. Wanted, yeah. I wanted the bodies, so I should have gone for the sw Svai handler box from the start. Uh, I re re regret that I didn't. And I also want to mention that the uh, in this kit, you get bits to make for every sixth uh, guy. You can make a, a guy with a uh, handgun. Yeah. But you also have a box uh, sp specifically for handgun handgunners, and that one actually has a few different bodies. So if you want more, more yes. va variation, you get. The... And and all the bodies in the um, again, I'm not paid by Warlord, but <laughs> when I'm before I go to bed, I look at my favorite miniatures sprues right um but yeah i think all of the dollies in the um the missile troops for lance connect they're all unarmored um and i actually really prefer those bodies to the um the pikeman one yeah. on the other hand as well like you actually have different uh poses for how you're holding the handgun so they're either aiming it or they're loading it yeah uh in the pikeman sprue they're only like shooting slash yeah. aiming um Again, like it also comes not only with new bodies but totally new heads, um, and it also comes with crossbows. Um, so it's pretty oh, cool. That I didn't know. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the last bit I want to say about th this kit is that they are excellent for converting uh, females for your army. Uh, the, the scale is slightly smaller than say Games Workshop. Um, yeah. And you you can mix them in. It's fine. But uh, if you want to take advantage advantage of that, they they are more petite. They are more uh, normal scale uh, than heroic scale, so they look great as as uh, women. Just had give them a different head, uh, may carve off the uh, uh, crotch guard a bit, uh, and maybe sculpt some uh, boob plate or something, and uh, we're good to go. They are really good for that conversion. I can testify. Okay. Um, I'll make a pick, unless there's anything more we want to say about uh, the uh, 
Landsnake Pikeman from Warlord. I'll, I'll save that for part two. Okay, part two. Uh, <laughs> I'll go for hassle free miniatures. And oh, a nice. car- character model, uh, Micah von Ostwald. Um, I have this miniature. I have not painted it, painted her yet. He will be. She will be my general for, uh, like the the grand general for my army thematically. Um, and I think it's a lovely model. Yeah. What's the uh, scale like? Uh, she the same question. Uh, she's tall. She's a tall mm. human. Um, she towers over uh, like a normal soldier, but I'm okay, okay with that. I quite like that, yeah. Yeah, characters should be a little bit bigger. I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't mind that, yeah, I'm the same. Um, I, I have a few uh, Avatars of War characters as well, and they are, two are yeah. bigger. Like, I had bigger than most other models. Sure. Um, you can also get this one in, a, in an attacking pose. I like this static pose better, but uh, there's a, a variant for a more uh, aggressive pose. And uh, they have a few other uh, character models for Perfect for Empire. I have a prelate painted up from them, uh, which is also lovely. Um, but um, yeah. great quality sculpts, great quality casting, uh, resin or metal. It's I love I, I love this company. Do you have a lot of other miniatures for other armies from them? Um, a few others, not a lot painted, but I have. Um, uh, stacked up some for my uh, uh, Words of the Dark Gods project ah, cool. coming sometime in the future and uh, yeah a few other things uh, they, they have a, a lot of really weird stuff and a lot of not safe for work stuff so don't browse it while at work <laughs> uh, so be careful um, but uh, a lot of really really cool stuff too okay um, Michael your se- second pick Oh yeah, I think you have it. I I seen it uh, when yep. you shared your screen. Um, uh, this guy, right? This guy here, yeah. So this is ironclad miniatures. They have a lot of like steampunk, kind of like Victorian sci-fi inspired um, miniatures, and they have so many steam tanks, or sorry, miniatures which can be used as steam tanks. Yeah. Um, this is the one I have. So I think you can actually check my photos on the forum. Uh, this fits really, really nicely onto the base for this tank. So 100 by 50, I think. Um, some of the other miniatures which you can get from this company do overhang it a bit, but there are modeling ways around that. Um, and I think it's like a really great alternative to uh, the Games Workshop miniature. Um, I think it looks yeah. kind of raw and brutish and um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. again, like, and and they're also so affordable. I should also say, like, this guy I think is like twelve pound or fourteen pound, <laughs> nice. something like that. Um, it's solid resin. The wheels and the gun and the chimney are metal, um, but other than that, it's just resin. Um, and yeah, it's really great. Really love it. It's it's like we we saw another steam tank earlier on the show, and which is very similar to Games Workshop one, but it's good to see some options that are more yeah for sure yeah and i think as well like if you do like a more historical themed army this certainly fits very nicely yeah um yeah all right uh dan yeah well i'd like to talk about the models i'm painting which are from perry miniatures and i'm a huge perry miniatures fanboy they uh incidentally sculpted most of the dogs of war line too at least the human parts of the dogs of war line going back to the earlier part of our conversation uh so they do a lot of multi-part plastic kits now and they have a really beautiful war of the roses line and their foot knights are what i'm painting here the cool thing about it is it comes with both hand weapon not shield that's the only caveat is you have to source some shields uh because historically people really weren't using shields once they were in full plate can you move them a little bit closer to the camera? Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So these are the ones I'm painting right now. So you got hand yeah. weapon options, but they also have got a few polearm options. Nice. So the kit is really cool because it comes with both. So And it's enough to give everybody either a hand weapon or like a two-handed hand-and-a-half sword or a polearm. So, uh, and the other cool thing about it is that I just mentioned the Warlord kit, is that they kit bash really well with that kit. So you can have, and what I'm doing is I've got some Perry Foot Knight bodies with pikes. I don't know if you can see this at all. Yeah, but yes, yeah, so these are Perry bodies with Warlord arms. 
sell really well. I think because again, they're pro Gloria, really not warlord sculpts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And on the flip side, I have my Landsknechte, and they have in these variants, they have Perry. So I here, I don't know if I can back that up a little bit, but yeah. So like a couple of these look like just sixth edition Empire Great Swords, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the kit bash really well. I love those two kits, and really anything from Perry Miniatures is nice. I haven't gotten anything from them, but they look like a very good option. Um, again, look, look like the scale is perfect for making uh, women as well. Um, do they? Yeah, have it's, nice it's all. It's all. I would call it like between twenty-five and true twenty-five millimeter miniatures. So they're small, especially if you're using. The seventh edition Empire Plastics versus, say, like the sixth edition. Yeah, the cool. They'd scale pretty well with. Anyway, the, the sixth edition uh, uh, Games Workshop uh, State Troopers, also known as the good ones. So. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, th I think because they were sculpted by the Perrys, if I'm yeah, not exactly, mistaken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Do they have uh, uh, some options for m mounted models at Perry? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So even just in the War of the Roses line, there is the Foot Knights kit, which is like the full plate guys that I've been showing you. There is a uh, Bows and Bills kit where it's halberds or pole arms and then bowmen. And then there's a Mercenaries box, which has pikemen. I think there's an option to make some halberds and then crossbows and handguns. So that's sort of the the kit. And you can kit bash them all. Oh, they're all the same scale. You yeah. can mix and match between them. And then there's a mounted, actually two mounted kits. There's one that is uh, mounted men at arms, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Uh, again, the limitation there is there's no shields in them. You'd have to buy shields, but there's plenty of ways to source those. And uh, and then there's also a light cavalry option that I can't remember the name of, but I also have those. Yeah, I think it's just called light cavalry. I have it here on screen, I think. So yeah, really yeah. a fantastic yeah. line, and it, you could do an entire Empire of Zunstall army just with Perry War of the Roses miniatures. Yeah, uh, and you know, obviously find like some characters in the weird stuff, like you know, uh, Arcane Engine. But yeah, uh, yeah, so really fantastic, and it's cheap for forty miniatures. It's, you're talking like yeah. U.S. dollars, like thirty thirty five dollars. So it's yeah. just. <laughs> Yeah, they look nice. Uh, I've been looking for to get some some female knights for our army. I'm not sure if I want that, but if I do, then um, the Perry knights could do well. Hmm. Okay. Um, Michael, or you were another done. pick? No, you were done. Uh, you had, I was done. Had your two picks. Uh, it's my turn, uh, and I'm gonna finish as I did the the, the last topic with a giant. Yes, uh, I have this miniature. Yeah, yeah, I have it too. I um, it's the next next giant I'm pa painting up probably. And I mean, if there ever was an imperial imperial giant, this is the one. <laughs> yeah, and again, you mentioned before like mom. Uh, sorry, uh, mantic kind of really up in their game, but I think yeah. as well, like, mom are also up there as well. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, mom miniatures, um, and uh, they have a decent range of empire stuff. Uh, they have ogres as well, and, and a few uh, great swords and stuff like that. But uh, really, they, mm -hmm. this is where it, it stands out, I think, in, with yeah. their um, giant. And they even have a, I think it's they've, they've two giants for warriors of the dark gods. Yeah. And so. my second giant miniature is actually their armored warriors giant. Ooh, now I have to try and find that one. So I think it's, bar I think it's under barbarians, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's, there he is. Chaos Giant, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, this guy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I can see it. I think just because the armor covers... I mean, you've got the heads along the, you know, the belt, but... Yeah. Otherwise, it's just full plate, which I think you could kind of paint up much yeah. more nicely. So like like less um worn shall we say and yeah. again it's like imitating a imperial guard let's say so yeah yeah that would be really nice I think okay any other uh, last minute miniatures shoutouts oh Dan um, 
mean, I could talk for ministers all day. I mean, I really yeah, could. I'm, I'm the same, yeah. Victrix Warlord, uh, <laughs> right, Perry Miniatures, just, just talking about historical multi-part plastic kits. But yeah. as I said before, if anyone that's looking to start an Empire Army, uh, I really would encourage you to look at Perry's line specifically, just because you can do an entire army just from them. And uh, yeah, and it's very affordable. Yeah. And Perry is paying me for this, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's another, another company I'll briefly mention um which is quite quite new um it's called steel fist miniatures um and they have a lot of um japanese feudal miniatures so samurai miniatures they have a lot of lance connects as well um they're all metal uh, but they're really nice as like you know kind of character building models for your bigger units um, and even really suitable for like multi-basing because some of them are in kind of like action poses with pole arms and halberds. So it's really good to kind of like break up the monotony of, of your unit. Um, but yeah, they're, they're quite affordable. Um, but again, like you're not, I wouldn't really be making like a whole unit out of them. I'd be buying them for like, as I say, like adding some character and different poses to break up everything. But they have artillery, they have knights, they have light horsemen with um, handguns. So you could use it as writers. Um, a nice mix from there. Right. Nice. Okay. Um, shall we catch up with our painting? Uh, I think Dan has already been uh, displaying. Do you want to yeah, geez. T talk how, how, oh. you, how you've been doing? Yeah, yeah. I got them all base coated out. I just got to wash them now. This is a, like my traditional painting style is I'll block out color. I'll wash it like the whole thing in a pretty heavy wash and then I'll reapply that color as my first highlight color. So I found that is a really good solid foundation for what I'm painting. So that's, it looks like, yeah. I think these guys are easy, but they're mostly metal. Yeah. So I cheated a little bit. Ready to go, ready yeah. for a wash and then let them dry and then start the highlighting process. Nice. So. Michael? Um. I'm looking at Dan and I'm like, what the fuck have I done the last two <laughs> hours? Um, so I've I've done some more brown. I admit that my lighting is not great, is it? Um, I done some more brown on these guys. Yeah. So here's the thing. I mean, God, it looks it looks awful and it is awful, but wait till you see it on my my painting thread. Um, I'm a big convert to contrast paints because I'm tacky and lazy. Um, <laughs> There's Nothing wrong with no. contrast paints. They're <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Well, here's the funny thing, right? So, like, I do the contrast paints, and then I will do... So, I do, like, one layer of contrast, and then I'll go back over with either another layer of contrast or washes, and then I will layer on top of that and highlight. So, I'm almost using the contrast purely as a base. Um, a, a base color, I mean, rather than using actual base colors. Yeah. Um but I, I find it much more enjoyable than doing like base colors, which some depending on how you've undercoated it might be fun or tedious. Um, but yeah, I'm really I really love that, and I think actually you can get really great standards if you put in the extra mile afterward. You know, doing the layering and the, the highlighting. Yeah, no, no, um, the con contrast paints paints are great for get, getting that that base layer. Yeah, um, that's that's very true. And uh, I think as well when you've got guys that have like a lot of ruffles. So again, like most of the empire line or any line of that you use for empire they have like a lot of creases and crevices yeah. especially lance connects as well for the plumes right it's yeah. just calling out for contrast um so it's really good for that kind of thing as well sure. uh, i've been using it a lot on skin lately um yeah more, it's really more, good for more skin. like a wash uh, i Sometimes I, I do it as the first step over white, or sometimes I paint a skin color and then, then use the contrast paint on top of that. Um, yeah. So both, both works. Um, for myself, um, I've been working on my halfling, and he's almost done. I'm going to do some cleanup, and then uh, I will do uh, the, the varnish and then do the metals on him. Nice. Uh, but he's almost finished, and he's a neat little guy. Uh, I think he will stand out nicely in the army if I ever do use him. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with him. It's gonna be a good addition to the army, I think. What's the miniature holder that you're using there, Matt? Uh, it's Games Workshop. 
uh, and, oh, then, and then I mount my guys on a sprue base thing, so he's just yeah. super dude on top, and I yeah, break yeah. him off and put him on, on the base then. Uh, so it it works super well. Uh, I'm using milk carton tops. So... <laughs> I have I was just like grubby hands, man. You guys are much better. Figure out who the pro is here, folks. I, th <laughs> this is his base. It's an old ah, nice. uh, varnish <laughs> box that I just blue tacked onto the top. Uh, so I, I, I use a variety. Uh, this really good, I think. Uh, I actually found a, di a different use for them. If you put a base in here and then put a lot of uh, putty on top, and then you, you use the rollers, you have the perfect height from the uh, oh, nice. so to get a perfectly hmm. smooth uh, surface for the roller. So that's a top tip for you. <laughs> uh, OK. I think that's about settles it for this stream. Um, unless there, we have any last, last final thoughts about the empire of Sonstad. Don't change a lot in the lab, please. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. Oh, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like a, oh, a POW, man. He's so shell shocked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, um, thank you two very much for coming on to the show. It's oh, been thank you. A, a, it's been a pleasure. It's been great this episode. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. And thank you to the audience for uh, staying with us, if you have. And uh, I really appreciate you watching this. And I hope you enjoyed it. And, oh, yeah, uh, thanks for having us on. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Let's do this again sometime. Agreed. Um, I, 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 as I said, I won't make any promises on how I'll, I'll run the show in the, <laughs> in the future or, or, or the channel. But uh, there will be more content in, in, in the future eventually. And uh, I'd like to have, have both of you on. As a pair or in other settings. Uh... I just realized I look like a halfling. Sorry, I'm a bit <laughs> taller. <laughs> you look fine. I'm that little inquisitor, you know. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I made him ginger. He doesn't have any, much hair, but he has a little bit of hair on his feet, and that's. Yeah, that's right. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you should see. You should see my feet. <laughs> Not All only right. for the gangrene. <laughs> okay <then. laughs> again thank you both for coming on thank you for watching and see you on the next one whenever that is cheers bye